Hi. It's been a while. <laughs> What's up, everybody? Oh, my God. Oh, it's been... This is weird. Yeah, oh, who's that? So I asked very nicely, and Joe said I could stream today. <laughs> oh, how you doing? Man, I don't... It, it's only been two weeks, but it feels like it's been a very long time. Everything is weird. Who's this new streamer? Okay, I should introduce myself. Hi. I'm Serge. Joe and I have been, you know, seeing each other a little on the side. It's been, I, it's been about 14 years, but I think we're ready to come out and be public about it. And she's letting me, uh, she's letting me moonlight on her channel. <laughs> I just got a very good laugh from her in the outer room. <laughs> How you doing, everybody? God, I missed you. It's also it's weird. Don't screw up Joe's channel. Too late. I already have. Yeah. Hi, cutie. Oh my goodness, we're wearing matching sweaters. This is my streaming sweater. This is your streaming sweater. Yeah. Oh. And now it's just comfy. Now it's just your cozy sweater. I thought I would get to sleep in. Oh my goodness. Well, come come talk to the camera. We should have done like. Oh yeah. Oh, Joe. Joe says she hasn't showered. She's taking it easy right now. That's not even true. Poor Joe. I'm so jet lagged. I've been getting up at like four in the morning every day and just kind of, just kind of <laughs> like, Joe, Joe, I'm bored. <laughs> Walk and have breakfast with me, Joe. All right, give me a second. Um, I need to tweet that I'm live. Hello. I've returned. Wait, I'm back. I'm back from Europe. Want to chat about... All right, um, God, why is tweeting so hard? Hello, I'm back from Europe. I'm just hanging out and chatting about the trip, sharing some photos, some friends might even join. Come say hi, twitch.tv slash Serge Jaeger. There we go. Is it because X is bad? I mean, you're not wrong. Oh, man. All right. First off, bunch of subs. Hi, everybody. Hi. You ah, meaningless Meg. Thank you so much for 19 months. Welcome back. Thank you. Pearl Sec. Thank you for the 11 court charger. Thank you for 24 months. Enjoy your diamond bean. Joe has subscribed for 31 months. Compliments of Heron Blade Master. Thank you, friend. Azure Heights, thank you for the 49. Something, something, Joe about the Take Jover. Take Jover is such a good line, by the way. Oh my God, I, I'll talk about how great Joe is in just a second. T and Trilogy, thank you for the 39. Surge is back, what a lovely day. Who is this gentleman on Joe's channel? I know. You get to sub during the Joe times. It was nice, but so glad there's so many subs today. I mean, honestly, I I can't even begin to tell you what a huge relief it was to know that Joe was holding down the fort while I was gone. Um, obviously, it was, you know, kind of sad that I didn't get to travel with Joe the whole time, um, which would have been obviously like the best way that this could have happened. But as far as a second best goes, Joe saying chat get me company. Yeah. There's like a very real fear when you're a content creator of taking significant amounts of time off and having things like fall apart or be fallow or lose everything. Um, but yeah, Joe, wonderful Joe. Wonderful Joe, keeping y'all entertained, hopefully. I love seeing all of her highlights in the latest highlight video. Yeah. What's up, Raven? What's up, Shay? Oh my goodness, Joe's gonna make me tea. I wonder if my um I normally get a lot of voice strain, but I haven't <laughs> haven't really used it that much while on vacation. Oh my god. Okay, so where where do we even start? I have I have so much to talk about. I have so much to talk about. I have so much to share. I have so many amazing stories and adventures. Uh, Joe says, don't start anything yet. 
Uh, we need more. We need more people to show up. We need to give folks some time. All right. What's that, sweetie? All right. Joe has insisted that people will miss out, so we'll give you some time. Go tell your friends. Let people get on in here. Hey, what's up, Milk? Happy jet lag time. I. Yo, first off, Fatty McGiggles, thank you for the 16. Two, all right, here's a story that I can tell that nobody will miss out on. Jet lag is so weird. Jet lag is so bad. Oh my God. Um, so this is my second day back, two nights sleep, and I cannot sleep past 4.30 in the morning. I went to bed at... Um, 8.30 last night, like I forced myself to stay awake for that. And it's a, it's an eight hour time change from here to uh, England, by the way. So you wouldn't think it's that bad, but it's, it's bad. Early morning streams incoming. Maybe I thought about it, but I had, I had stuff I wanted to get done today, including, um, you know, I made a bit of like a, a photo album for later. And in case some friends joined, I did some, some like backend tech stuff. Like I had stuff to do today. I worked out, which was great. I'm very proud of myself. A little 5 a.m. workout. SDB, thank you for the 65, friend. And Aaron, thank you for the 62. My goodness, friends. Thank you, thank you. But here's, here's where my brain is at. Here's where my brain is at, because I've had the exact same dream for the past two days. And it wakes me up like every two hours. And it's it's so... It's so disorienting. So in my dream, I'm in like, the only way I can describe it is liminal space. Um, so I'm always in a train station. I'm always in a train station and the train station simultaneously morphs into um, hotel rooms and my bedroom. And then on joining me on the trip um, are either, <laughs> Joe, Olivia, or Nadine, and Olivia and Nadine are who I was traveling with the whole time. Um, if you don't know who they are, they're an absolute delight. And and so it's really strange because I'll be like, one second I'll be at a train station with two of the three of them, and then the next section, the next se like second I'll be in a hotel room, and I'll be looking around. I'll be like, where am I? And then I'll see my dresser, and I'll be like, why is my home dresser in this hotel room? <laughs> and then I'm like. Now I'm back at the train station and uh, it's it's so weird. It's all over the place. And um, it basically at one point last night at 11 at, at night, so I'd been asleep for like three hours, I like ran out of the bedroom in my underwear and I was like, why am I in this train station? And Joe's sitting there playing video games and it's like, what's wrong with you? Go back to bed. And I'm just like, <laughs> Ugh. it's really, really, really weird. Um, I don't know. I don't know if I'm properly communicating how messed up my sleep is right now because of jet lag. Gah. Yeah. Yeah. Especially the part where I was like, I'm in my underwear and I'm in a train station and I don't know what's happening. That that part was uh, not good. Traveling slower means your body has time to adjust to time. Oh, that's fair. That's fair. There's the cinnamon roll. Welcome back. Thank you. Hey, the man leak. Yo, friend, thank you so much for 59 months. I don't know. On the way on the way out, my jet lag wasn't nearly as bad. I got over it in one day. And maybe I was just like way more tired, but like coming this way has been tough. Forget jet lag. What about Joe lag? Yeah. What if I just simply moved to Europe? No more jet lag? You know? I had a really, I had a really, really, really good time. Yeah. Hey, NB Chris, thank you so much for the 20. Sounds like my brain is trying to process all the traveling at the same time. It really is. Yeah. That was not supposed to be my resub message. <laughs> you know, it's fine. It's fine. It's fine. Yeah. All right. What do you think is an appropriate amount of time to wait before we get into proper story time? Joe says, when, when the subs stop. All right. I think you weren't too destroyed by the Barcelona heat compared to others. I hope the rest... Oh, yeah. Barcelona was fine. Um, I mean, I was sweaty. 
and I had to shower like three times a day. <laughs> but I wasn't I wasn't ever feeling ill, if that makes sense. Yeah, I don't know. It was kind of nice. In the mornings, it was cool. I put on, I wore this sweater like the whole trip. Joe was a very, a big, huge hey, sweetie and walked it already. You? Yes, you did. Yes, you did. Hi. <laughs> you don't like being covered in sweat all day? Like, it wasn't even being covered in sweat all day, which was kind of bad. The worst was feeling sticky. That's the part, that's the part that I didn't like. Like the worst in the in the TMI section, the worst part was like, is this a called if this is an armpit, is this an elbow pit? Like that feeling sticky? Ugh. Yeah. Yeah, like walking around Barcelona was fine. Uh the convention like the inner elbow, yeah. The the um the convention center was oh, I was just like just melting and miserable. I wish I could handle heat. It was 25 and humid here, and I felt like I was in a sauna. A crook. Oh, that's a good one. <laughs> I felt like pants chafing for the first time in my life. Nice milk. So if you if you didn't uh, if you didn't put this together, I had an opportunity to hang out actually like a fair a fair amount with milk um, when we were in Barcelona, which was very cool. I learned that milk is Canadian. And a lot of you are thinking to yourself, but Serge, the name is Milk and Bags. Shouldn't that have been evident? Apparently not. <laughs> I, uh, I did not clue into that, which, good job, me. Yeah. Sometimes, I don't know, sometimes I look at chat names and I don't think of them. I don't think of them as words, if that makes sense. I think of it as like a noun. So like milk and bags isn't a reference to how Canadians used to get milk delivered to their house in bags. It was, that's just them. I don't know. Germany also has some milk and bags, I guess. Wait, no, we don't. There we go. Perfect. <laughs> All good. We had a good laugh. Yeah. Yeah, we did. Hey, Lirazel. Thank you so much for gifting a sub to milk. I appreciate that. Ontario and Quebec still does milk bag. Yeah. Yeah, BC and Alberta doesn't do it as much anymore. Western Canada, but that scans. I don't want to give away too much of milk's private info. I don't want to dox them. I know all of their information, their home address, their credit card number, if they're susceptible to any diseases, all of that info. Let's just say I'm very persuasive over dinner. <laughs> Wait, Riley doxed you while it was his mod? Oh no. Is the stream sponsored by Big Milk and Bag? I hope so. I really hope so. Hey, what's up, Tears Red Right Hand? What up? All right. Milk says I can share some stuff. Milk is from Quebec. Milk's pretty cute. I'd, I'd call him a cutie. <laughs> And has a very, very medium taste when it comes to uh, which streamers he likes to hang out with. It's probably my only critique. Of all the people he could have hung out with in Barcelona, he chose us. Ugh. Strike against milk right there. <laughs> Hanging out with like Voxy and Riley. Ugh. Terrible company. Trying to sit, but I'm just giggling to myself here. To get milk in the bag, does the cow have to be in the bag first? That's the easiest part. You just kind of divide the bag and separate the milk. I was warned that lure people are tall, but yeah, you are all tall. Yeah, we get that a lot. Hey, Zalukster, thank you for the 20. Looks like you're all having a great time. Did you have a chance to get to the Sagrada Familia? I did, I did. We're going to wait. We're going to hold. We're going to stretch for at least 10 more minutes and then we'll jump into all of the uh, all of the travel stuff. That's what I thought too. I got to meet Uno in person, which I'm very excited about. Hey, look, a surge takeover. I'll check in with Joe. Maybe she'll kick me off tomorrow, but I'm here for now. No trip talk without Joe's permission. That's fair. Will I build the Sagrada in, in Minecraft? That thing was so wild. 
That thing was so beautiful. Hmm. I heard James's scheduling mishap. Which one was that, Tier? Look, I got a, I got a lot of stories. Everything, you know what? What's actually going to be fantastic is this opportunity to sort of sit down and chat will help sort of like solidify the memories as well, which I'm looking forward to. Did I get to the park? I did not. Well, ironically, I got close to it, but not into it, which we'll uh, <laughs> which we'll get to. The trip was incredible, Heefnoff. Tom Kiss, thank you for the twenty three. Welcome back, and thanks to Joe for the takeover streams. I know. I went to Park Guell, and it was full at eleven for the whole day. Yeah, turns out if you don't buy if you don't buy tickets ahead of time, you just don't get in. And uh, I found that out the hard way after climbing um, what I can only describe as the grandfather of all hills in like 39 degree weather and 8,000% humidity. <laughs> oh, interesting. The tickets are only for non-residents. No kidding. Oh, James, that scheduling incident. Yeah, poor James. Poor James had to buy tickets for the Sagrada twice. You live on that hill? No way, Bird Flapjack. Yo, I think you were literally the first person I met um, at, the, at the con, by the way. That was just like so wild. There's a great view from the top of that hike. Yeah, 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 yeah. All right. So without getting into specifics of the trip, what I do want to share is how absolutely incredible this trip was for my mental health. And I, I don't think I realized just how, I don't want to say stuck. Um, and in, in no way do I want to say that I was in a bad spot before this trip started. Because I wasn't. But like, ever since the pandemic started, Joe and I got into a routine. Like, just a routine, routine, routine. And like, early on, especially especially in the early days of the pandemic, I just kind of um, buried myself in work. Not just buried. I think a better way to describe it is I anchored myself in my work. Um, because there was so much uncertainty there was so much like messiness and whatever that i was like all right i need one point of stability in my life and i'll build everything up from that and so it was like all right i'm going to stream every single day at 9 a.m and that gave me an excuse to wake up because left to my own devices <laughs> i'll like stay up until six in the morning and then like my sleep schedule will get all messed up and just kind of spiral so yeah I'll wake up every day at nine I'll shower, I'll shave, I'll make sure I'm presentable. And I never stopped. I just, I just didn't. And we got into, I'd, again, not an unhealthy routine, but breakfast was at the same time every single day. It was always the same thing. Within like a 15 minute window, that was the thing. And then lunch was always the same and dinner was always the thing, always the same. And I was just tired constantly. And just not really finding time to do anything else. And yeah, just going on this trip and just being like, oh my God, traveling is so good. Traveling is just so important. And I'm walking like shave and I'm all stubbly. Yeah, well, not right now, but yeah. But yeah, like walking, God, 15, 20,000 steps a day. At every, every meal is an adventure. Every day is an adventure. The amount of stuff, oh my god. A book solid day schedule can destroy people? Well, it's it's weird. It, there's two sides to it, right? Because like, I love a plan. This is the old, the old project manager in me. I just love having a routine and knowing what I'm doing and making sure that like I'm getting the most out of every day. But yeah, this, this trip was so, 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 so good. At some parts, it was, uh, yeah, 
very hard to accept that it was over, which I guess my subconscious is having a hard time letting go as well, considering my completely bizarre dreams <laughs> and my jet lag. Sorry, I'm trying to turn on my fan here. Embrace the chaos a little, honestly, a little. I want to switch it up. Like, it can feel like a dream sometimes. I, God, Europe is so cool. Ugh. <laughs> uh. Because I live in this like very small, very Canadian, picturesque town on the West Coast, and then suddenly to be like, I don't know. I don't know why this is my Europe face. Like, hello, Ooh, I'm on a cobblestone street and in this weird alleyway. So I don't know what the what the plan is moving forward from that, right? Like, how do I... How do I take this energy? How do I take this passion and this rejuvenation from this trip and then mix it into the parts, <laughs> go outside more, and mix it into the parts of the life that I have that I really enjoy, right? Like how do we how do we learn from this and make it better? That's that's my main takeaway from this trip. Stream less. That's my job. I got to get paid. <laughs> Uh, travel vlogs, YouTube edited content, maybe? There's definitely a point on like the last couple of hours that Nadine, Olivia and I were hanging out together where we're like, okay, how do we, how do we do this forever? <laughs> how do we, how do we make it our job to just travel to places and do stuff? You always enjoy the G vlogs? I mean, there's going to be lots of those. <laughs> Believe you me, there's going to be lots of those. And some of these stories are going to overlap. And, uh, you know, you'll be able to see the story in video form and also in this form. Travel and coffee with Surge when? I mean, I wish, right? Simply stream in different places. Yeah. If you ever find out, let us know. We can form a giant travel group. Hmm. All right. Wait, I didn't see Graham take out his camera for the first time around, so... He'll be in some G vlogs. Oh, yeah. Sorry, Milk. Everyone's going to know. <laughs> you messed up. I mean, real talk. If you wanted to be out, I'm sure we can message him and put like a giant mosaic over your face or video edit like a bag of milk or something like that. <laughs> I would watch and support a surge goes across the world to drink all the coffees. I'm, so much of what I was sharing while I was traveling is coffee related. So, obviously, the death of Twitter, the introduction of X, whatever you want to call it, is very sad, very frustrating, because turns out I actually really liked it, and it just sucks. It just sucks that it's, it's dying. Because um, I had a really good time, a really, really good time uh, posting photos and posting updates, and I can't believe how many... Uh, people in Europe and the UK know about who I am and care about who I am. Like that, it, it's wild, 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 wild. And one of the big things I started trying to do, <laughs> you could say that I left with like a bachelor's degree in the social media platform formerly known as Twitter. And by the end of it, I've got like, I started a master's degree in Instagram under the guidance of Olivia, which is amazing. So if you're not following me on on Insta, please do. I want to post on it more regularly. And so I want people to care about that and motivate me to do it. We all hanging out on Mastodon? Maybe. The problem with Mastodon is it by design doesn't have as much discovery, but it could just be a cool place to hang out. We'll see. We'll see. But I digress. Follow me on Instagram, Serge Yeager. Um, encourage me to post more photos. And yeah. But yeah, like so much of what I was doing was coffee. I've got some... Um, if you want Barcelona cafe hookups, I got you. If you want Zurich coffee hookups, I got you. London, oh my God. Actually, let me, this is, this will be the first sort of like image I share from the trip. <laughs> and it's going to be the coffee map of London. That, I would love that, Joe. I'm going to share the coffee map of London that Joe made. Is that a problem? Well, it's okay. The link is unusable. 
All right. So. <laughs> All right, you ready for this? There are so many good places to go in this city. There's so many. And I think I only hit five. So we hit these two down in the Peckham area, which are both great. And then our last day in town, we went to, uh, which one is this in Marleybone? Watch House Marleybone, so. Yeah. That link is difficult, not unusable. I mean, it was still cropped. My mom just subbed for eight months. I liked all of your updates on both Twitter, X is stupid, and Insta. Yes to more surge posts. Thanks, mom. Chat, my mom's here, be good. <laughs> What's up, Viscount? That iced coffee made us try in the Gothic Quarter was really good, and I'm not even a coffee fan. I mean, look, I had, I, I have made a reputation as being a person who takes people who doesn't like coffee out for coffee, and then they enjoy coffee. Turns out a lot of people just haven't had really good coffee before. That's my thing. Blast from the past, you were four weeks old on your first trip to Europe. No coffee on that trip. Yes. It was, uh, it was tre tremendously important to my nonna uh, that I be baptized in Italy. <laughs> so my mom whisked me away when I, was, when I was this big to make nonna happy. Oh, not just in anywhere in Italy, but in Rome. Uh, Monoceratosis! Oh my god, 48 months. Thank you so much for the continued support and enjoy your new toasty bean. Does that give me dual citizenship? Uh, I believe I only have Canadian citizenship, but there is an opportunity to apply for EU. Maybe? I'm old now. <gasps> I opened this. It smells amazing. Oh my god. Smell this coffee. So I brought back one bag of coffee from the whole trip. This is a roastery out of Zurich called Mame. This recently placed, this, re, this, this cafe recently placed second in the world, on the planet, in the, um, in the World Barista Competition. It is some of the best coffee I've ever had. Yes. I don't even want to try and think about how expensive this coffee was because it was in Swiss francs. <laughs> Good. I was actually not even thinking of, of picking up a bag. And then Olivia was like, you absolute melon. This is some of the best coffee in the world and you're not going to take it home with you. And then she bought me the bag. Because she's like, how dare you? How dare you? I'm like, I'm offended on your behalf, Serge. I'm buying you this bag of coffee. And then I carried it with me. So thank you to Olivia. All right, let me return this to Joe. I'll be right back. <laughs> Hi, Olivia. I had a good idea. You had the best ideas. My dear, dear friend. So yeah, if I ever wanted to get organized, I, I guess I have a, a, a European citizenship waiting for me at some point. Oh, Serge Jaeger, a beep boop. Oh, this means Olivia is perhaps ready to join. All right, uh, give me one quick second while I try and figure some stuff out. Olivia is going to join for the conversation. Hello. You you are muted. Okay. Louder. Sorry. Hi. Hi. 
All right, um, chat, give me one quick second. I'm going to try and make Olivia appear. Barcelona too. Yes, look, I did it. Yay. Hey. All right, let's get some volume real quick. Uh, let me know how Olivia's volume levels are. We need, we need you to talk. Tell me how jet lagged you oh. are. Oh my God, Serge, I woke up at midnight last night after mm -hmm. I went to bed at 9.30. And then I was up for an hour and a half-ish. And then I went to bed again at two in the morning. So <laughs> I woke up at 3.30 in the morning and I've been up since. I am having just, I told you a little bit about this before. I'm having the weirdest dreams. And yeah, you were mentioning them. They're making it so hard <laughs> to stay asleep. I kind of hate it. Mm. That's not good. Yeah. I haven't had any dreams. I literally just cannot sleep regularly. I'm Maybe someday soon. Really Maybe someday soon we'll fix stuff. Oh, I have to make Turn oh. me back up a tiny bit. Yeah, I will make you louder. Things I don't often hear. <laughs> <laughs> All right, give me a second. I'm going to change your crop real quick here. Okay. Also, don't mind me looking down. I'm getting a deck ready to play in a little while. All right. Uh, I did just the, the weirdest hack job of putting everything together this morning. So if like scenes are weird and I'm cropping Hi, stuff, Jorbs. so it goes. Jorbs is in chat too. Hi, friend. I met Jorbs in real life in Los Angeles. I was, yeah. Jorbs is a, a fun and a cool guy. And I will fully admit that when introduced, I was like, who is this friend? I don't know. <laughs> And then you're like, oh, dang. Like, ooh. Cannot hear Olivia when she's alone. Thankfully, I'm never alone. So. Oh, my goodness. Everyone's so happy to see you. I've got an anime on my side. All right. Should we start talking about our trip? What do you, what yeah, do you sure. want to do? Uh, I, don't, I don't care. Yeah. It's your show, man. I'm just here. Yeah. I'm excited. I, I've had so much fun traveling with the two of you that it's like very, very, very difficult to adjust back to real life after this seriously and so i just wanted to get you and nadine in as much as possible so you can like Aww. share your perspectives and recreate stories i guess so probably the 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 interesting starting point was how was your barcelona because like i barely saw Hot. you yeah i mean i was working you know that's the only thing with the magic cons they've been like oh i didn't get to see you. i was like yeah because i was on the clock you know yeah <laughs> yeah i have a contract that's that's me being out on the floor or doing certain things at certain times. So it's kind of like hard to see people. Um, so yeah, like it was fine. Like I said, it was toasty. Oh my God. Was so, -optimal. so something that people might not know is Europe has energy regulations for large, large convention centers. There are um, restrictions that they can put in for air conditioning and stuff like that. So the most that they can give the con is 24 degrees Celsius, which I don't know what that converts to in freedom units. 80. 80. 80-ish. Yeah. And that's not the temperature inside. That's the temperature that the thermostat is set to. <laughs> yeah. So it was like, it was like oh, 75? 28 oh. degrees in there and just sticky and humid and it was doing its best and, and we're just dying the humidity it was the humidity was oh my god and it's it's just uh rough being in costume like if i could be in whatever i wanted and be able to be in like a nice breezy dress or something it would be it would have been fine but i had to be in liliana and two pairs of pants and <laughs> boots and it's like I had it easy uh, out of everybody, basically. So it was, yeah, it was a little, it was a little rough. I mean this. Other, other than that, everybody was super sweet. Oh, my God. I gave away so many relentless rats. Oh, right. I yeah. Rats. Gave away all the rats. Um, oh, yeah. No. Uh, Garuk uh, Roman is the yeah. player's name. He was, he had it the worst out of all of us, for sure. Was 
yeah, who, I mean, if you want to give us some of the, the cosplayer insight, was, was Roman the worst off or was there like another costume that was I particularly think so. bad? So, uh, Teferi has it, uh, like just a nice big linen, like dress basically. So he's, <laughs> he's got it pretty solid. Talia's Elspeth, um, which I made, uh, I made it as best I could for what she had to do with it, but it's foam. And so there's not a lot of breathing. Oh, no. <laughs> At least she didn't have the wings for this con, right? Uh, yeah, I mean, well, yes and no. Like, we did try. One of the attachments got messed up in transit or something. So that's why they didn't, she didn't have them on as much. So I'm I'm going to try and help her fix those up. Uh, and then uh, Sydney, Tappy Toe Claws, and Chandra isn't too bad either. That's all of us. And then mine, you know, like I have obviously my my shoulders out. There's not much of a top. There's enough of one, but not a ton. So uh, it's not so bad to to get that. Hi, Vince. Yeah, if I may very sorry quickly. Yeah, Vince you. just raided. What's up, buddy? Oh, my God. We're so sorry. Yeah. One of one of the things, one of the biggest regrets that we had was we didn't get to hang out with Vince in the south of England. We really, really wanted to. And yeah. all right, it just it just didn't work out. Thank you so much for the raid, though, friend. I hope you're having fun with Baldur's Gate three. Okay, enjoy dinner. Bye. Yeah, goodbye, friend. Sorry, we couldn't see you. Uh, I I do want to share one photo I have. Oh, wait, 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 one wait. Day. I made I made scenes. So oh, sweet. if I do this and then I click this. Whoa. No, I did bad. Wait, did I do bad? This buckets. Why didn't that work? Where did you go? I'm right here. No, everything stop. Hold on. You ruined everything. There. Okay. I promised I'm <laughs> Sir. <laughs> All right. Look, as I said, it's kind of a fly by night operation right now. I haven't I haven't tried to introduce a guest onto the stream in like 5 years. So <laughs> All right. <laughs> First try. All right. So if I bring this photo up now, Yes, there we go. So there's Chandra. There's the Garak cosplay. Uh, there's me getting bullied. Oh, yeah. Um, Ugo, who was in Aragorn, he had a lot of foam on, too. He he probably had it the worst out of all of us. Oh, right. So there were there were two style of cosplayers here, of course. There was the Planeswalkers. And then there were the... Um, the Lord, uh, the Lord of the Ring one specifically. Do you have a good photo of Nadine? I was just going to bring up her Instagram. I think she, I think she put something up of Arwen on there. I can't remember. Yeah, I will. I'll just go to her. I think she's got a pinned post at the top. For a second, I was like, why is your image of me so bad? I have a good camera. And I forgot you're pulling from Discord. Well, I'm porting from Discord. Yeah. And also like you're in. We're whole countries apart. I'm very sad about that. Okay. I know. I that was the saddest leaving, actually. Yeah. I can't for whatever reason. Um, sure. There we go. <laughs> uh, it's like the smallest photo ever. But yeah. yeah. Uh, Instagram, Nisa, Nisa underscore cosplay and. Oh, there's all these photos of us. My heart. Oh. <laughs> oh. Yeah. So a little bit of Lord of the Rings stuff there as well. Well, I don't know. I kind of just want to start clicking on photos. Why don't we, um, oh, why don't we talk about the part that. where we started traveling together? And then I can go back and do the Barcelona stuff whenever afterwards. What if? Well, we did. We were in Barcelona. Oh, no. You showed up Wednesday night? <sighs> Thursday? I have no idea what day I got there. With jet yeah, lag and the time know. exchange, it I was know. so messed oh, up. I, know. I yeah, think was, I think I got there Wednesday the 26th. Okay. Uh, Milk and Bags, yes, it was the first time we traveled together. We went absolute trial by fire. Nadine, Serge, and I have never traveled together before. And we're like, what about if we do, do a week's time worth of travel? And... <laughs> Share room and hope for the best. So not not only that, I had hung out with Nadine maybe three days in my entire life, maybe yeah. for a total outside of a, of the PPR, maybe eight hours total. 
And so this is really funny. I am, oh man, I... Oh my God, I'm so tired, I'm so sorry. No, 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 you're fine. So as soon as I, as soon as I know I was going to Europe, I was like, I wanna hang out for another week. And I send Olivia a message and I'm like, of all the people I could possibly think I want to spend time with, I think Olivia would be an amazing person to travel. So I just fire off a random message to Olivia. Mm -hmm. And then at some point, I'm not really paying attention. At some point, Nadine just shows up in these planning calls. And I'm like, great. Okay. I guess I'm also traveling with Nadine. Didn't ask any questions. Just kind of figured. I love, I love how Serge's story is from his perspective. So. I had been planning on staying a week after and hanging out with Nadine anyway, before Serge ever messaged me. Cause I haven't, uh, we hung out last in Brussels in 2020 and obviously because of, you know, the Panini hadn't been able to see each other since. So I was like, well, I'm right there by Switzerland. I'll just go stay with Nadine. So she and I had been scheming. We were probably just going to stay at her place and like hang out. And then Serge messaged me with like, Hey, Olivia, I have a crazy idea. I'm thinking about staying a week after. I was like, join the club, bro. I'm like already going to be doing that. <laughs> do you want to join us? And so then it just became the decision of, do we just hang out in Barcelona? Do we travel places? Do you want to see Switzerland? And went from there. So to Serge, he was like, somehow Nadine got entered into the plans. And I will tell you, actually, Serge just inserted himself in yeah that. yeah yeah i invited That's myself crazy. along with them yes i don't know that <laughs> cracks me up you stayed with riley in barcelona for four days after the con it was so much fun man barcelona okay. was awesome yeah barcelona was nice but like again it was just so hot <laughs> yeah yeah you get enough subs do i get a nap well the problem is is i still have to be able to fall asleep and i'm i'm my brain is awake oh my, my god like please no <laughs> on a scale of one to ten how bad is your jet lag because i'd put myself at about like an 11 right now well, I, again, like it, it feels like I'm on the right schedule because like I went to bed 930 or 10 last night. I just kept telling Brian, like I'm sitting there like falling asleep playing Play of the Spire. I was like, just let me make it till nine o'clock. And so I go to bed and I wake up at midnight, like awake, very awake, not groggy. Like I've been up all day awake. So I was like, oh, God damn it. And then, you know, just tried to read the internet and play flash games on my phone until I could go to sleep again. I kind of drifted off, like I said, around like one forty-five or two. And then I was up an hour and a half later. So I feel like it's not terrible. Mm. Like I don't feel jet lagged until it's nighttime and I'm yeah. very, very not sleepy. You'd be proud of me though. I woke up at four fifteen, couldn't get back to sleep. And I was like, I'm just going to work out. Yeah. And so I threw on uh, some League of Legends, some of the Midnight NAs. 8 a.m. in Barcelona makes perfect sense. Oh, my yep. God. Yeah. Yep. That's One sec, exactly there's a siren. Waking up for. No manage. Make it work, though. Sorry. My, uh, anytime a loud siren goes by outside, I just mute so that people don't have to listen to that. Got it. So there was a question earlier of um, who was the project manager for our trip? <laughs> And hmm. I don't, I don't think we had one. It was just like full chaos the whole time, yeah. which I, I kind of loved. I, I guess Serge didn't tell y'all. No, I haven't, I haven't shared anything yet. So go for oh, it. Oh, okay. I mean, let's put it this way for London. As we walked in, we had a reservation in another city that we couldn't get to. So we're walking through customs and I was like, just tell them that address. Uh, we're going to find a new place in London. Like we didn't have a place to go when we were collecting our bags. I was sitting there just like squatting on the on the tile floor like I'll find something don't yeah. worry it's we're going to be fine we'll take the train in there'll be a place to stay much. So our our trip was probably like three major sections. The first was Barcelona where we're doing the convention and it, it was it was work with like cool things on the side. Yeah. Um and then on the 31st we flew to Switzerland. And before before I left Canada, we had a, a flight to Switzerland and a flight to yep. London booked. We had our accommodation in, not even in Zurich, just in Lautenbrunnen booked, didn't we? Yeah, we didn't even. Yeah, yeah we, we had to figure been. that one out last minute. Yeah. Nope. Uh, and then we had nothing figured out in England whatsoever. And just oh, a bunch. Yeah, not in, 
just a bunch of loose plans because we knew like Graham and Kathleen were going to be there. We knew some other creators in London or in England, and maybe we could meet up. <laughs> we basically had our 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 leaving Barcelona things like we have a flight to Zurich on the thirty first. We have a flight out of Zurich on the third, and we fly home on the seventh. That was really like the big skeleton. I want to say because we we got our hotel in Lauterbrunn in like what like a week before we left. Yeah, like, that maybe? that felt good. We had a plan. It was fine. Yeah, we knew what was happening in Switzerland. The rest of it was like something will stick, and it did. It was fine. Um, yeah. So we landed in Zurich. Uh, just walked to that little boutique hotel. Oh my god, it was so cute. One of the better meals, surprisingly. That salad, I still can't get over how good that was. Um, and then took the train to uh, Lauterbrunnen. Thank you, Nadine, for understanding Swiss German. Oh my god, she was don't. such a hero. Oh my god. We Matt get to our little place in Wengen, which ruled. We took a hike, a nature hike. I got to pet a dog for like half an hour. Oh, hold on. I, no, let me let me get some photos of this going now. Yeah, yeah. All right. So, yeah, no hotel. We just we just yoloed. It was great. We just we went for it and said yes. So we're when we are in Zurich and we're about to go oh to the train God, station God, up God, there. Oh. Olivia, Olivia was just like, "There's one thing I have to have, and it I is sausage and bun." <laughs> It's so good. Yeah. So we found this like random little kiosk, of course, which Nadine uh, negotiated. Yes. <laughs> oh, it's so exciting. Yeah. I had my roll and my bratwurst and some mustard, some very spicy mustard. And I got to eat it on the train. Yeah. And then where are we after that? A good day. Uh, oh, right. And we were in yeah, so, we the, the train ride in. This was super funny. Uh, so Nadine didn't mention to us that the day that we were landing in Switzerland was August 1st. His birthday, yeah. And the equivalent to that for the Americans would be like 4th of July. Like the holiday is just the name of it, which is a big, big deal. And so we got like peak Switzerland. And I actually think, Olivia, you have way better photos of this than I did. It's such a, a delightful Swiss experience here. Uh... It was it was fantastic. I don't oh, there's know. There's so many pictures I didn't put in our shared drive. Yeah, I don't know the I best way to get your photos up here, but yeah, we yeah, get up there. This is Discord this or? is the route. This is the view from our hotel room, by the way. So that's the train up yeah. the mountain, and we're looking out, and everything is just absolutely stunning and picturesque. And one of the reasons we came to this area, Nadine said that this valley was the inspiration that um, J.R.R. Tolkien yeah, had for Rivendell. Am, am I getting yeah. everything there right? Oh, oh no, you changed it. Don't worry. No, stop it. Don't worry. <laughs> Coming back. Oh, I have to hit turn on camera. I'm sorry. I'm yeah, um, let me find, like, let me show you that same view when the sun is out. Yeah. Like, this place was just... Just this stunning. Our, this oh, is hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. View. So there's Olivia with some of her photos now. This was not an expensive hotel. Like, we paid a very reasonable rate for this, especially when you split it amongst three people. Oh, my God, Olivia. I'm drinking the coffee you got me in Zurich from Mame. Mm -hmm. Oh, my God. Yeah. The pink bourbon. Oh, that is delightful. Oh, that is delightful. German karaoke. Wait, you were traveling? Wow. Didn't Hi George. Didn't even miss us. Didn't even miss look us. This, look at this variety of cheese. <laughs> so one of the things I learned the important stuff. Look at all those cheeses. One of the things that I learned from Olivia is her favorite thing to do, her absolute favorite thing to do is to go to supermarkets in foreign countries and just walk around. Oh, yeah, there's the good photos of the horn and everything. Yeah, look at them horns. Oh, thanks, Mysterious Friend. Yeah, uh, so real quick, Totally Not a Beholder, thank you for the Prime. Uh, Nitro, thank you so much for the Prime in 15. And an Anonymous Friend, thank you for gifting a sub to Olivia. I really do appreciate that. Yeah, my favorite thing, bar none, in a foreign country is to go to a grocery store. It's the best. Ugh. 
So oh, yeah. Look at these cuties. And we're talking about oh god, real quick. Oh my heart! You can't post photos like this. Yes, I can. Yeah, that's fair. So uh, when Olivia was mentioning that we went for a hike, like yeah, we get there. It's the day after. Uh, we're walking around. Like, look at how cute Switzerland is. There's little there's, goats. You, you got to make this window bigger. You do realize we just see, like, it's not full screen, right? Whoop. Yeah, but there's so much. Is that better? Are you happy with that? I mean, I guess, yeah. There you go. There's that dog you got to pet. Oh, my God. It's such a good dog. <laughs> It was like half an hour that I was just sitting there. Oh my God. Uh, like and the like longest time. So Olivia has these like claws, uh, these acrylic fingernails. And this dog was the happiest dog alive. Look at this face. Oh my God. Such a sweet pupper. Yeah. Oh, he's such a good friend. And uh, there, was, there was another dog in here. Let's see if this works or if it's going to break. <gasps> <laughs> there was a huh? there was an actual puppy that was in the in the truck and uh that face oh my god i love it <laughs> in barcelona all the dogs are kind of tired of the heat and olivia just made their day by scratching their belly i will pet the dogs always yeah and then yeah because it was the first we also got to have delicious stuff like fondue. And I have uh, one video of the raclette. Oh, good. Nothing like milk and cheese. And somebody was laughing. They're like, yeah, that's a very Swiss plate right there. Just like yellows and grays. <laughs> yeah, but you, got, you even got burned cheese. He didn't give me any of the like crispy stuff. I was a little salty. And yeah. he got like a blackened one. I was so jealous. <laughs> Oh my God. So when we were trying, yeah, yeah, yeah. So when we were trying to find places to eat in Vengen, did I pronounce it right? Yes. Um, Are you going to tell them about the fondola? Yes. Yes, I am. <laughs> oh, the way you said that. The highest rated place to get fondue in the city was the fondue gondola, which we, of course, named the fondola. And it was only for two. And this began the probably the single most difficult part of our entire trip was trying to travel as yep. three adults. Yes. Biggest problem, especially trying to find a hotel because you can find double occupancy anywhere. Yeah. Uh, triple like changes the equation. They want if there's three people in that room, suddenly it's like four hundred dollars more a night. It was just like, oh, OK, cool. Yeah. All right. So day two of Switzerland is probably the single wildest 48 hour period of my life. Uh, and this is when I realized that I will probably forever in the rest of my life love Olivia and Nadine because I don't know how this trip happened or how it came together. Uh, nobody had to sleep on a cot. We found family rooms with like yeah. multi beds. I always got to have a little bed in the corner or whatever. So keep in mind that on the 31st of of um july we woke up in barcelona and then now we're in switzerland and nadine arranged for us to go to oh can you pronounce it jungfrau jungfrau well, that's the top of the world part we went to the, uh, this, the highest place in in europe which was wild 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 <laughs> and we didn't know how to pack for this we're going from 32, 35 degrees Celsius weather and a million degree humidity to uh, between two and negative three. We had to buy a sweater on the way. Again. So yeah, and now we are <laughs> like, we're up here and we're on the top of a glacier. <laughs> yep, it was sweet. And I'm just looking around and I'm just like, how, how are we here? Okay, so that's, that's the one we didn't go to. I'm looking really quick. We didn't go to Grindelwald because I was salty because we could have done more cool stuff. But we went. Uh... Yeah, it was Jungfrau Jok. Did I wear my hiking sandals? No. Not. Thank goodness. 
We did not take a gondola. We took the train. The I, train. I got so teased by Olivia and Nadine about my hiking sandals that I left them in Canada. Practical sandals. You w they wouldn't have worked anyway because there was snow everywhere. Was it a chairlift? No, 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 no. We, we rode in um, like train and then transferred and then a train and then transferred. And then apparently they filmed a Bond movie here. There's like a crazy uh, tunnel board through a mountain. But yeah, we got to do a Disney princess moment here with Olivia and Nadine. <gasps> That's right. Feeding the birds. Have, have the burbs. Yeah. Oh, look at them. They're so sweet. They were very gentle. Yeah. The creeping. Great pictures. Oh, my God. Yeah. Olivia has... These are just the ones I took. Olivia has, I don't know, eight or nine times as many photos as I do. I've got, like, probably a few hundred. Yeah. And then just pictures the, the then view of everything up here. So yeah. that that's just another glacier just chilling there, right? Yeah. Oh, this was something that Olivia taught me about. What are the lines in the glaciers called? Medial moraine. Yeah, like that's that's just so wild. Look at this. Oh, right here for scale. Uh, those are people. <laughs> that's a footpath that a human walked. Yeah. Person. That was so the worm boat. That is exactly why we went up to the glacier. So Nadine's mom, Yvonne, actually like helped subsidize our trip up there. She's like, I want you to take the foreigners to see the glacier while it still exists. Was like kind of the implication there. Yeah. So yeah. <laughs> yeah. This is not a footprint. This, this whole thing at the bottom left is no, 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 no. That's a person. What about a footpath for hiking sandals? There were no hiking sandals. <laughs> Uh, for Gotta context, time. for context, Olivia, A. Predolin is my mom. <laughs> Got it. Hi, Serge Mum. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. Oh, my God. And then we go full gremlin mode. So they had this series of tunnels carved right through the glacier. We got to do ice tunnel stuff. Yeah, we did. And then, yeah, this is the uh, be careful you don't slip. This is their power face. Oh, yeah, we were doing we were so ready. It's a perfect sign. There were a lot of really solid signs on this trip. What did you what did you call your power stance so you'd never fall? I came up with something. I don't remember. Yeah. Oh, no. Right. We do love we do love the gremlin stance. That's true. Now, um, do you want me to show the magic game photos or should sure. I skip those? Yeah, that's fine. So we this didn't is actually play a game. We just faked it. Like we faked it harder than we faked it at uh, Stonehenge. <laughs> we were just being. So we're <laughs> like, man. As soon as we found out we're going to ridiculous places, we're like, we need to bring magic stuff with us. And it was just too busy to actually play. Nadine had three decks with her, but we uh, we decided to do a little photo op. <laughs> yep. Oh, we of course we took fake pictures. Like, guys, we had to make some content. We're not so. How else are we going to write this trip off? <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> I love someone commented on the picture that I have of, that I posted of. Um, obviously, I blocked them because who cares? But um, they were just like, wow, talk about making magic your whole personality. It's like, you do know what we do, right? Yeah. Oh, apparently, uh, Jungfrau literally translates to top of Europe. You missed Wait, the first oh, part. virgin top of Europe. Yes. Oh, pardon me. Sorry. This is what happens when I scan or skim rather. Social media was generally a mistake, milk and bags. However, yeah. I did get to meet these people. We didn't have Ice Age decks, but they did actually have. Oh, God, uh, that'd been so funny. Ice Age squirrel in the ice. Did I, did I grab a photo of that too? I don't know if I did. Yeah, hold on. Let me put that bigger. Yeah. So I love that they had this. <laughs> They had little spots where they like carved the ice out and did little pop culture references and stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I didn't really take a lot of pictures of, do you have any good pictures of like the carvings and stuff? Cause I, um, I saw I you taking the photo in your cameras really better. turn out because the lighting was. Yeah. Really yeah. Yeah. Fair. But Serge did take some action shots for loading ready run. Oh, <laughs> uh, so I was wearing my, I was wearing my lure hoodie. And I thought to myself, man, you know who'd be really happy? 
Beej. Beej would be really happy if I got some merch photos. You want to hold that up again real quick? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Some super sweet battle tested. Uh, yeah, I'm just like, hey, picture. look where look where I'm wearing our brand stuff. <laughs> Yeah, so I'm in an ice cave wearing the lure hoodie. I, I had to buy like another thermal sweater that's underneath the hoodie just so I didn't freeze. Yeah. Uh, if I may very quickly, Olivia, Bright Storm Rising, thank you much for the Prime and 35. What's up, Crusher? Thank you for the 59, friend. You could be a fashion model. Oh, I wish. All right. Uh, More pictures oh. of us being cute. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, you can see how windy it was up there. Heckin' Wimdy. Wimdy. I'm just about to get to those I photos, video, too. Actually, I think. Oh, hold on. I have a video of you in the ice cave still before we get to the... Oh, there's oh. that one, too. That's how windy it was. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, here are the girls being absolute gremlins in the ice cave. Oh, God. Yeah, this was good. Just like everything was ice. This was actually really Congress cool. This was a choice. Oh, yeah. Yeah, you make fun of my hiking sandals, but you were wearing chucks. Yeah, and I didn't fall once. That's fair. Even All in right. the snow. So at the very end, let me let me show you like an establishing photo here. So this is the resort, and you can see like the glacier in the background there. We like walked around inside of it. And then you come out of this hike, and there's uh, like an actual science observatory up top. That's where we were feeding the birds. So the bird photos are up there. There's the glacier. There's everything. And then there's just this giant mountain area where you can look around. You're standing on top of the snow and the glacier, and you're just looking around and looking at stuff. That's so cool. Not to burst any bubbles. There's taller mountains in, in Europe. Yes, but this is the tallest train station in Europe, according to the Swiss. And are you calling the Swiss liars? Also... We, we, that's fine. Yeah, we didn't have to summit the tallest mountain. Yeah. But they're advertised, it's top of Europe, open bracket TM. <laughs> yeah. And now we have just more photos of uh, Olivia Nadine channeling their absolute queen energy. Oh, yeah, that was a good one. You know, you have to go for those, like, patriotic shots, right? Oh, by the way, oh, yeah. this was the lineup of people waiting to take a photo holding the flag. And we're like, no, nah, we don't care. <laughs> we'll just walk. No, it's fine. We'll, we'll just get behind and do our own thing. Yeah. Then this is the, uh, the train ride back down. Oh, yeah. Here's our manufactured, uh, quote, unquote, sandwiches of some cheese, uh, salami stick. Sun-dried tomatoes and was that? Oh, the pretzel rolls. God, yeah, pretzel rolls. yeah. We did uh, we did big picnic energy most of the time. So we like go to the grocery store and load up on snacks and throw it all in a bag and just take it up with us. Is there any skiing up on the glacier? Yep, yeah, there were ski resorts and stuff as well. Not, I don't know. It was kind of weird because we're so off season, but um, a couple of the train stops on our way up involved ski resorts. And that's how we were able to buy sweaters was we went into effectively like a ski lodge and they had extra gear. We found moo moos. Mm-hmm. Swiss moos. How are the prices? <laughs> uh, yes. How are the prices? Well, I'm glad I don't have Canadian dollars. <laughs> Oof. It's a little brutal. Oof. <laughs> yeah. Oh, God, more cow pictures. I have so many pictures of cows. All right, so... I did get one picture of you in the reflection. Oh, look at me. God, I look... That looks like an edited photo, right? That looks like you have, you have taken all of these different moments that happened in the trip and combined them. Yeah. So one, one critique we had of Vengen was that everything was probably a little bit more expensive than it was probably worth. Um, for the Canadians, it, it was kind of the equivalent of like Banff, right? It was like very clearly a touristy area and it was stunning. So 
For most people, yes. the glacier However, adventure. Oh yeah, go ahead. But look at this. Yeah, I was about to say. So that wasn't even our full day. For most people, the glacier adventure would have been enough. That was only, <laughs> this was only part one of our day. So we got onto the train and we went all the way down. So this is back near the hotel. The sun is out today. It's beautiful. And so this is Wengen. And at the bottom of the valley is the town of Lauterbrunnen. How'd I do? Yes. So there's the train ride down. There's Lauterbrunnen. And again, this is the valley that inspired uh, Rivendell. And like, look at this picturesque waterfall. Right? Like, look at this. Yep. Come on, Switzerland. This just isn't fair. It's not. And so Nadine looked some stuff up and there were a couple of hikes that we wanted to check out as well. And the first one is we could hike up and check out this waterfall. And then the second was what, like 30 minutes beyond that as well. There was like another waterfall park thing. 35, 40 minute walk to the, to the other place. Yeah. Uh, so, which was, hold on. I have the name saved. Mm. I mean, I'm going to butcher it, so apologies in advance. It was. No, that's Young Crow. Where the hell is. Meet Moot, Beat Boot. There's lots of brewing in. You can keep talking. Okay, all right. All right, a couple of photos of the same thing. Like, look at how cute this town is. This is walking through Lauterbrunnen with the waterfall in the background. Hey. Okay. <laughs> All right. Trummelbach so, Fall. Oh, sorry, go ahead. Trummelbach Fall, I think. Um, Nadine told me the translation to that is sort of like... Um, it's either an onomatopoeia for the sound of beating drums or it means like the sound of beating drums because it's waterfall through a cave and it sounds like percussions. Oh, yeah. So Sunrise Lyro right. posted in chat. Trumble back fall. Doing our best. All right. So I don't have photos of the whole in between, but picture us walking us up a road and then going through oh, some I like do. really cute farm fields. And then we get to the base of this waterfall and there's a staircase and it leads to a murder cave. Hang on, hang on, because yeah. we also got Nadine gremlining. <laughs> yes, we did. Yes, we did. <laughs> you got any more? Uh, no, no, no. It, yeah. Oh, look at this. Yeah. Just stunning. Yep. All right. So we go up the staircase. We get to the okay. entrance to the murder cave. Y'all, Serge was so excited. And then suddenly, this is really weird because we thought we were going to, we thought we were going to, um, oh, no, no, different cave. Not that one yet. Oh, but still. oh okay. This is the other murder cave. This is this the is first the, one. Yeah. You truly Lord Trumbull of the Black Rings. Fall. Yeah. This is not Trouble Block Fall. All right. And then, yeah, we go through these weird caves and weird staircases and all this stuff. And then we get to go, and we didn't expect this. We were hiking up to the first waterfall. We are, like, behind that waterfall from the distance. So this is the waterfall here. And we get to be, like, right beside it. Which is absolutely incredible. There's that Olivia shot of the same moment, too. Yeah, spoilers. <laughs> Sorry. All right. So down here, you can kind of see that there's a trail that's going off way in the distance. So we hike all the way back down there. We get onto this trail. And keep in mind, have the murder stairs. this is the same day as the glacier, right? Oh, do you have the murder stairs? Please. Yeah, of course. All right. Murder stairs. Yeah. Like, oh, like straight down waterfall dripping weird super tiny dark cave <laughs> we're like behind the waterfall at this point <laughs> seeing all these mountains would be harder had i not been to the kootenays a couple weeks ago yeah all right 
let me just quickly check in where we are here. Um, all right, so there we go. We're doing our big walk. It's beautiful. We're in the bottom of this giant valley. Everything is stunning. Like, look at this. We got the Olivia photo similar there. Um, one of the amazing things about this photo is if you zoom in, like, there's even more waterfalls in the dis- like, <laughs> there's a waterfall, there's a waterfall, there's a waterfall. Uh, and correct me if I'm mistaken, but I believe that right there at the very top is the observatory from those photos earlier. I can't remember, but you're probably correct. Just like way, 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 way up there. Like, we were up here. <laughs> and now we're down here. <laughs> And so um, we originally think, because we don't really know where we're going, Nadine's just like, oh yeah, there's two cool sort of like things to check out. They're both waterfalls. We think we're going to another waterfall similar to what we just saw, like that sort of picturesque thing. And after this like 30 to 40 minute hike, there's just this giant lineup out of nowhere. And it turns out that this is um, a park to go into. And they have, and you've got all the photos from this one, Olivia, like if you have the map. And what it is, it's this amazing waterfall that's carved its way through the rock. And over the years, over the process of like decades, basically, they've added staircases and um, this like really cool elevator train thing that's like an angle of like this that gets you up there. And there's 10 different viewing platforms as you basically like splunk through this cave and get to see just this absolutely, absolutely stunning thing. So yeah, there you go. You can see one, all the different stops, and you can also see the elevator on the side. Um, and because Olivia is out of her mind, she's like, you know what would be fun? Forget the elevator. We're running up the thing. We're just doing the whole yeah. thing. We We're doing the whole run. thing on foot. Speed run the waterfalls. And this is wild, because in my mind, I just, I just keep thinking to myself over and over. It's like, 48 hours ago, I was in Barcelona. Four hours ago, I was at the top of a glacier. And suddenly, I'm with these two chaos gremlins splunking through caves, checking out quite possibly one of the most beautiful waterfalls I've ever seen in my entire life. And the photos that I have don't even do it justice. So this is the first platform that we're seeing here. Oh, the sound isn't picking up. <laughs> Because it's not playing sound, but this is just Serge very excited. And a great face there. That's a pause. Oh my God, it was so loud. Well, the, the name of the waterfall, again, I don't know if it's a trans, maybe somebody who speaks Swiss German can translate it, but it was meant to talk about the sound. Like it sounds like the percussions of drums. And it was so, so, so loud. Uh, so I couldn't pick which of these photos was my favorite because there's just the three of them just so happy in front of this waterfall. So I kept all three. No. That place slaps. I've been there twice. Yeah, it's incredible. It slaps. Yeah, it was way Yeah. So this is a view because we're going like through a cave, out of the cave, through a tunnel, back and forth. And so we get views of looking back. Here's a, here's a scenic surge. My silhouette. <laughs> And then, like, again, the thing to take away from this, A, not only are the girls cute, uh, but, oh, like... I never saw that picture. It's way cute. Oh, yeah. Is like the, the Google Drive I set up? Uh, I made a new one, and I shared it in uh, WhatsApp. I have all my photos. Oh, are, okay, got yeah. it. Yes, Serge has absolute postman <laughs> caps. It's nutty. Nutty. Yeah, yeah my... Okay, I'm just going to dump a bunch of pictures in here. Oh, sure, 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 sure. I don't know how that's going to work. Give me a second. Let me go to the booth. So can you just add to that gallery? And if so, how yep. does that work? Mm. We'll find out. I'll try to add one. All right. We'll see if it adds it to the bottom or not. Okay. I have added one picture. Streamer has legs. Oh, my secrets. So I imagine because it's time stamped, it'll add it at about the same spot. So it would be, let me see. Oh wait, that's. Which photo did you add? 
Okay. Yes, it does uh, put them in correct timing, so I can. We're good. Those are ski calves. <laughs> He's an amazing skier. Well, thank you. Streamers got legs in the 420 patch last fall. Shh. No, streamers are just busts. We don't exist <laughs> from the waist down. I think I found one of the ones of you cackling too. All right. It's adding like the videos of you and stuff too. Yes, oh. they are all time stamped. Oh, this is delightful. Heck yeah. All right. Let me let me find that. As I said, welcome to our professional, super professional slideshow uh, where we figure it out on the fly. Yep. I'm sorry, Joe. Apparently Joe's. So where, why don't I see these yet? They're uh, right back where those pictures you posted. That you were just last showing. So in there. let me let me go there because I can see my name next to all of them, but I don't see an Olivia anywhere. Scroll up, or oh no, that's the correct direction. Yeah, right. Because this was this was right where we were. What? Yeah, so they're in there. Refresh. You try F5. Uh, brutal. Hold on. Let me go to the booth for a second. Uh, I'm going to be honest, chat. I've never really used Google Drive before. I just kind of figured it out because I couldn't get the photos off of my camera <laughs> prior to this. So my, my knowledge and understanding how this works is pretty low. Olivia and Nadine look like a cute couple in a lot of these pictures. We are. I mean, you should see the number of photos they did. It was heartbreaking with like the, the heart hand half and half. And I was like, oh, mm -hmm. no. Uh, Google Drive takes a little bit before they're available to everyone. <gasps> uh, oh, okay. Well, okay. well, let me show my perspective and we'll go back and right. we'll add the Olivia perspective. All right. Uh, so, yeah. So the, the thing I really wanted to focus on here was like, look at the stairs that have been carved in and you could see where the, like the water started up here and just carved all this out. So walking through, this is amazing. The sun is coming down from below. We're like basically entering. Oh, wait, your video showed up. Hey. All right. Is this just me giggling? One sec. I it's... think that's one of you giggling and running up the all right, uh, all right, I will unmute it. Yes. Is it loud? Yes. Oh, sorry, it's buffering and taking forever. But yeah, like we're- one of you just laughing. We're literally in caves and there's water running down the stairs and I'm just like, what is my life right now? You hear me giggling? Scrooge was having the best time. Are you so entertained? <laughs> Yeah. Uh, oh, oh, geez. There's so <laughs> eventually, eventually we got to one and the waterfall, like the water is just flying, like right in our face. We're just soaked. It's so cool. Well, like, look at like you could see the water just flying everywhere. Right. What are we saying here? So two days ago, oh, no. we're in Barcelona. Four hours ago, we're at the top of a glacier. And now I'm exploring the most magical waterfall cave. What is my life? Oh. Yeah. I found just the right one. It was you in absolute wonderment. Like, look at 
look, my, I'm glowing. I'm actually glowing there, right? Yeah, we're soaked. But now look at this. Look at the caves inside of this place. What? What's going on, Switzerland? Great hairstyle. Thank you. Your glasses. Oh. Oh my God. Yeah. Look at this. Is probably one of my favorite photos I took on the entire trip. Oh, all right. We have a translation here. We call it the drum or drumming book falls. Yeah. Yeah. So the water carved out of the cliffs, the sun coming down. Uh, you can see the beautiful valley behind us the way that we came. And then, yeah, we took the stairs back down, tried to dry off in the sun a little bit afterwards. Pesky tourists. I mean, hey, we resemble that remark, eh? We sure were. Yeah, and then you can see how much the day has passed because the sun, man, it got dark early because the sun goes behind yeah, the mountains. Yeah. So now the sun's only on one side of the valley. And yeah, and we had fondue for dinner that night. Yeah, we did. There's a magic card name if I ever heard one. Yeah. Oh. I mean. And there was more coffee. Uh, yeah, coffee everywhere. I think every part of this trip was amazing and magical. But that day, the one-two punch of like glacier into waterfall cave. Like. I don't know. Wild stuff. <laughs> yes. Real quick. Pixlar Dragon, thank you so much for the 42. Monday was when I was at work in the office. I was wondering if Barcelona was real. Yeah. So a very funny story. Um, when we went to Zurich for the first time, so we found a hotel. We got there like pretty late. I think we landed at what, like eight o'clock, grabbed dinner, got our yeah. hotel. Uh, the next morning, before we we're going to go on the train and go to Lauterbrunnen and start this adventure, I was just like, ladies, there's a cafe we have to check out. Are you okay, like, getting up early and trekking with me and finding this place? And they're like, yeah, sure, whatever. I'm like, great, awesome, okay. And so we go to a cafe called Mame, which just placed second in the world at the World Barista Competition. And... I'm pretty hype. And I'm like, I don't know what we should get. I don't know what we should get. And Olivia's like, dude, just order everything. I was like, are you yeah. sure? Like, don't quit being a coward. Steve. Yeah. Yeah. She's like, when are you going to come back? Grab everything. I'm like, all right. <laughs> so, so we got uh, an espresso tasting flight. So we got, it was the same coffee served as an espresso, as a cap, and then as a pour over. And then we got a pour over tasting flight, which is three different coffees. Uh, and then... They had another coffee. They had another coffee, which was their like competition blend. So we got that as like a milk drink and as an espresso. Uh, and God, like what else? What else did we get at a certain point too? We got a filter flight. We got the yes. uh, the pink bourbon as three different. Um, you got the exceptional, which is one of the geisha blends they had. Yes, yeah. Um, <laughs> baked goods, everything. Olivia did some like video content for it too. Oh, right, they free poured the matcha latte and a seahorse. <laughs> so, anyways, um, Boris was a pro. So our our barista's name was Boris, and he was also a Brewers Cup competitor. But <laughs> the be <laughs> the best part of this story is. We go through the order and he snaps a picture of the receipt and sends the photo to his coworker because we were the first customer for the day. Like they had just opened. Nobody was in behind us. Yep. He takes a picture and his coworker's like, who are these psychopaths? Like, I'm not coming in. Like, not a chance. And we have this we're amazing time. speakers that just ordered $115 worth of oh coffee. Oh my God. Yeah. Actually, like, I think it came out to almost a hundred Swiss francs for the whole order. Not even before we got the beans and stuff. Yep. I don't even want to talk about what that is in Canadian. And he wasn't, he wasn't going to buy himself any beans. I'm like, quit being an idiot. Get the beans. So I bought him beans. That was the coffee we were drinking earlier. Um, so 
this is amazing. We have this absolutely incredible experience. And then when we leave Lauterbrunnen, we go back to Zurich and we've got a little bit of time to kill before we have to fly to England. And so we stop at another cafe that was called Collective. That was actually a recommendation from Boris. And Boris is like, if you go there, ask for Nick. And Nick is just like, this is probably my favorite story from the same thing the whole time. Nick is just like, I was expecting you. You're like, what? You were ex I was expecting you sooner. <laughs> yeah. And this order apparently started circulating in the Zerk coffee community is like, watch out for these tourists. They're crazy. And just like, yeah, like basically we became infamous <laughs> like this threat. And so, yeah, we showed up. They knew to expect us. We ordered a bunch of stuff. Actually, Nick was awesome. As soon as he knew what he was, he's like, you're so lucky you got here when you did. We've got, yeah. we've got this coffee that's going to blow your mind. Like, oh man. There yeah. should be a video of you having your mind blown by some of the coffee I just uploaded. Oh, did you? Okay. Nope, All right. I guess on. it didn't. I guess it's not in there. Was this um, the Mame coffee or the... No, at Collective. At Collective? All right. I'll or give it a it second to the, load. Uh, Serge looking at coffee. <laughs> or ha find, a, find someone that looks at you the way Serge looks at coffee. Where is that clip? I think I found it. It's a 19 second. Oh, this 23? No, that's not it. I'll I'll put it in there directly. Coffee, which means everything is in the aftertaste, everything is in the experience, and you just have a smell. Because it's it's too funny. Surge is just. You just taking a little He's in it to win it for that coffee. It really was like a a wordless romance novel. <laughs> I found uh, I found an uplog or an update mm -hmm. thing view activity so I can see exactly when it gets loaded. Okay. Then what I will do is I want to add to this library. Why won't you let me? So right. Barcelona coffee. Excellent. English coffee? I only got to try about six cafes. Good. Good plus. I mean, again, talking about a baseline of like some of the best coffee in the world. The Zurich coffee was out of this world. Just, just exceptional. And I'd like to, I'd like to think that I have the ability to take people who are kind of medium on coffee and give them an experience that they'll remember. And I'd like, I'd like to think that by the end of this, like Olivia and Nadine, where you're like, you know what? Good stuff. Well, I mean, like it was all it was all good. The bigger issue was that you were drinking everything black, which I normally don't, and that my palate for coffee is very different from yours. I just want dark bean water with stuff in it. And that's kind of the extent of my coffee expertise. And he's just like coffee sommelier, right? Like sniffing it, checking the body as he swirls it in the glass, <laughs> lovingly looking at it, sitting there and just watching like 17 different emotions go through his face as he's like letting the flavor express itself. So it was it was pretty funny to watch. But um, I mean, I can appreciate that all of it was different, had a lot of nuance to it. But coffee has never been like my thing. Mm. So I know I was having good coffee, but like the the full understanding of like what level of good will forever elude me. And I'm OK with that. Olivia was drinking some of the best coffee available in the world today. <laughs> I should have brought an artist. <laughs> and, I know, and I know that I'm I'm aware. OK, I have the video. Let me see if I can send. Oh, it. but I don't know if the sound's going. Oh, right. You're going to no, 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. see if I can share it in that saved. So Nadine was kind of a trooper, too, because Nadine we Nadine know. started with being like, nah, this isn't for me. And then by the end, because she's got a background, I, she's pretty obviously got a background in wine because you could tell the way she was smelling. And she's like, oh, OK. You keep saying that it's just because I didn't do the full like nose swirl emote for it because the entire time I was smelling it too, I know how to taste beverages. And so just like, oh, Nadine, good job smelling. I was like, what the hell do you think I'm doing? I was just like, why do you think my nose is buried in this before I take a sip? 
Sorry, you did a good job too, Olivia. <laughs> no, don't try to patronize me after the fact. <laughs> uh, All right, move to album. I'm not gatekeeping. Slow down, slow down, he chat. <laughs> He's, he was in no way gatekeeping. That's not at all what was going yeah, on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Gentle head pat for Olivia. Exactly. Okay. She's just European surge. That's fair. Hey, what's up, Avi? Thank you so much for the 58. Okay. I think I have... What is this? That's Stonehenge. That's too far. Hmm. There's a suggestion that you should cosplay a cup of coffee and blow my mind. <laughs> oh, it's not putting it in. What a butt. All right. Well, chat, you'll see it later. Okay. Yeah. Olivia has plans. I, oh, no, it's uploaded now. So oh. Let me put it into, let me share it in there. Don't even like coffee, but I love watching folks who love a thing, truly enjoy it. Yeah, I yes, think. Yes, that's the best. Okay. So I think the best way to describe how our trip went was just a lot of, a lot of compromising, a lot of just saying yes. Okay, I added oh, it. It'll be you? there nice. in a second. Yeah. And yeah, for a group of people that really, I mean, obviously... Nadine and Olivia knew each other pretty well, but just the, the fact that they made space to invite me onto this trip and we just kind of went in with no plans and just made everyday work was incredible. Yep. Like just so, so, so cool. It's, it's, I, I mean, I feel bad because Nadine had the too large uh, <laughs> suitcase, but outside of that, like we just kind of flew by the seat of our pants and it worked fine. Poor Nadine didn't have a chance to drop off. So like Olivia traveled with Brian and was able to send all of her cosplay stuff back so she could travel like relatively light. Nadine had a 22 kilo hard pack rolly bag that had all of her con stuff in it and just had to drag that thing around the whole time. And every time we're like, hey, do you want to switch off? She's like, no, 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 no. This is this is my burden. I will <laughs> I will deal with this. Absolute doofus. It should be in there. It's a 19 second video in with the rest of your coffee musings. It is taking its sweet time. What a trooper. Honestly, yeah, huge. Mm -hmm. Especially because um, most parts of Europe are pretty good. But London, England, just like, no, nah, take the stairs. <laughs> yeah. Like their, their train system is just such a mess. So this part's done. Hey, Mop, thank you so much for the prime friend. It refuses to update. It refuses to upload. Hey, Olivia. Yeah. You want to take like a like a 10 second bio break? I have to pee. Go for it. Okay. All right. You know what? You and you and I chat am... all alone. Hold down the fort. We will. Tell we them embarrassing chat. stories about me. Wait, no. I'm printing this large, interesting, demonic looking lantern. And this is the base for it. Surge is bio breaking. I am turning a STL file into new G code. It's exciting. We're gonna save it to the disc. You guys can't see this, but I'm gonna talk. I'm gonna tell you about it. The playmats. Oh, thanks. My thanks, playmats. Jane Jenick made those for us. Uh, so we're gonna put this in the G code for the FL Sun, which is my super fast giant large Delta printer. Oh no, it's just so the I'll I'll see if I can find a picture of the file. But this is just the base for the lantern, so I'm gonna put cool stuff in here. It's for the LARP that Brian and I go to, because uh why play Dungeons and Dragons and roll dice when you could actually just hit someone with a foam sword? 3D printers are a godsend for cosplayers. Uh few folks realize though that it doesn't eliminate post-processing work. It just means you can do uh two things at a time. And then still have a lot of post-processing work. Because um, like resin's tougher to work with is it'll shatter. I am building stuff in a uh, very short TPU, which is a flexible filament that will um, under heat foam up. So you get to use less and then it's, you know, squishy and, and deal withable. Uh, 
but yeah, it's it's pretty nice. I'm trying to get back into my 3D modeling too. I took a little bit of stuff. Streamer ranking for the channel. Joe, old chair. Olivia, new chair five surge. That's pretty sweet. I don't know a LARPer that goes by books. Hello. Hi. I return. I'm saving this to disk. Uh, lantern top G code. I hope you didn't tell them any super embarrassing stories. No, I just told them about printing things in different filaments. Mm. Serge, you're also the fifth best streamer on your channel. Now. Oh, that's fair. Oh, yeah. I am I am absolutely carried by the women around me. Like, no surprise there, right? Yeah. Uh, lantern top open. Print. This is a this is a chunky file. All right. So let me let me set up. Oh, some man. Of... Yeah. No, LARPing rules. It's oh. super fun. Sorry, I'm talking to chat. No, 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 that's fine. I mean, you, you want... got me for about five more minutes. OK, I have to film well, an Elder Dragon hijinks, actually. Heck yeah. Let me set up the absolute chaos that was the England portion of our trip. Yes. So we tried to plan our trip. Uh, through like a couple of Discord calls in the weeks leading up to Barcelona. And it was really difficult because A, uh, there's a huge time change for Nadine. And B, uh, Olivia and I are both mega, mega, mega busy. So the amount of time that the three of us could actually sit down and talk at the same time about what we wanted to do was pretty slim to like zero. I think we had, I don't know, maybe two hours total. <laughs> <clears throat> over weeks where we actually like sat down and we chatted together and so that sounds right yeah big parts of we knew we were flying out of london um uh, but olivia and nadine really 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 wanted to go to edinburgh and they had to yes. go to go visit a friend that I, I didn't really know and there was some friction on that because uh the dates that they wanted to go was also the start of edinburgh fringe which apparently yeah. is one of like the biggest deals in the entire world it's and crowded and we had all these other conflicts around like Graham and Kathleen were in the south of England. We wanted to hang out with Vince slash Pleasant Kenobi who rated earlier. Once again, thanks. Uh, we maybe wanted to hang out with like Spice Ace Ra Ake Rack who's also in the south of, of England. It was like a giant mess. And yeah. because we never really settled down on what we wanted to do, we had no plan. We had literally no plan. So before we flew out of Zurich, from Zurich to London, because we'd already booked that flight, Nadine was like, this is dumb. What are we even doing? Um, we thought we were going to go stay down in the south. And I got on the phone and I managed to book a hotel room for one night. Like just the night we get there. But we had no other plans whatsoever. And we're like, what are we doing? This is all stupid. Like we have no idea. And so we're we're actually on the plane at this point. We have no data. We have no, no plan. We're like everything's kind of super stressful and everything is dumb. And then I think... Was it me who was just like, hey, I've got a compromise. Let me know what you think oh, about yeah, this. We were actually on the plane trying to figure this out. Yeah, yeah. yeah we're, we're, we're already flying to the country where we have no plan. And I'm like, what if we use London as a base camp? I'm like, so like, let's just cancel our hotel, which you only have for one night. Oh, right. There's also an F1 event in the south of England. So all the hotels were booked too, which is why we couldn't That's find a place right. in Salisbury. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah, So I was like, what if we use London as a base camp? Like, we just stay there. We do day trips out of it. We take the train system. Why don't you two go to Edinburgh? Nadine, leave your huge ass suitcase with me. <laughs> so you don't have to lug it around anymore. Just like pack what you need for the day. I'll figure it out. You go. And then when you come back, we'll like meet up again afterwards and we'll fly out together. And then it's like a light switch went off. We're like, yes, this is this is perfect. This is the plan. This is this is how we're going to make this work. So we're in customs. <laughs> we're in customs trying to get into through London Heathrow. And we still don't have accommodations in London. And this is what Olivia is like. All right. If anybody asks, <laughs> if anybody asks, like if customs has to give a, a, an address, stay in Salisbury. But we're actually going to try and stay in London. Oh, yo, Dead Pine. What's up, buddy? What's up, Dead Pine? We're uh, we're sharing stories about our our trip and just the absolute chaos and everything. So I'm, I'm gonna keep with going to the flow because we only have Olivia for a couple more minutes and it'll yeah. say a proper hello. Yeah. So we're like we're waiting for a bag and I'm trying to cancel the Salisbury Hotel. Olivia's like I think I've got like a little inn figured out. <laughs> 
found a room with a family suite available for like way too little money. And I was like, this may be fake, but we're going to we're going to try it. So I booked it. I hand surged my phone because I actually have uh, international like coverage and everything. So he calls them. They're like, oh, we totally got it. Like we were just like, oh, our, our flight's delayed. It's fine. They're like we totally understand you booked it same day. No big deal. So we get the Salisbury place canceled. And then I'm like, I guess we have a place. It's right by London King. It's by, by the King's Cross station. So we can just easily go to wherever we're going from there. And then we took the train in and made the best of it and got to our like absolutely perfect little family suite. So everybody had their own bed. We had a little kitchenette and uh, yeah, easily arrived in London and then just went from there. I think the the most important thing, especially for the Londoners in uh, in chat, is we had the traditional fare. Where to go? Let's back up this way. That's right. We loaded up with uh, chicken tikka masala and butter chicken as soon as we arrived. We yeah. went and got oops curry. What have I done? Because we were told that's what we needed to do. Yeah, you, it's not a proper first meal in England, especially London, if it isn't curry. It was delicious, <laughs> BT Dubs. <laughs> yeah, chicken tikka, butter chicken, garlic right. naan. Yeah, yeah. And then what? The next day was Salisbury. Yeah, Salisbury. So I'm gonna I'm gonna let you have the best time explaining that to everybody. You gotta you gotta dip now. Yeah. Hey, no worries. I really appreciate you yeah, hanging out. Sure. Honestly, oh you're God. God I pleasure. I mean I've said this I've said this enough, but I have I I miss you too so much. To go from spending every waking moment and every single chaotic second of the day uh, <laughs> to just like nothing. It just, gah, my heart. It is. I I do have to say, like, uh, I will super join for Minecraft one day. Um, it's wild that the three of us, like, I traveled with Nadine before. Like, she, I've stayed at her place, you know, for a week in Switzerland, and then we've had to bunk up for cosplay stuff a number of times. But like, adding Surge to it was like, well, I hope we all get along because seven days with no escape, because we're all like splitting a room to keep costs down, is ambitious. And like we all just were right on the same wavelength of like, we'll figure it out. It's fine. Everything. <laughs> so everything just came up roses for us. Like, even if we didn't have a plan, like nobody was like in panic mode. It was very like, it's fine. We're gonna get it dealt with. And we did every time. Like there were no big weird issues. No, no meltdowns, no no Nothing. fights. No. I think the closest we ever got was sometimes we'd be like, where are we eating for dinner? And then everyone is being too accommodating. We're like, just pick Everyone's something, like, yeah, who, somebody. somebody. Somebody make a decision because all of us don't want to decide. We're all okay every time. Like, oh, does anybody have any, you know, dietary preferences? Like food. <laughs> something edible that does not taste bad would be splendid. Yeah. Three polite people in a room. We call it the Canadian standoff. But yeah. Yeah, who was? So true. All right. I got to go record. Yep. Everybody, thank you. Uh, it was oh, it was great to meet everybody from Barcelona that's in chat. Thanks for saying hi. I hope you got rats. Uh, <laughs> I mean that in the great way of like, I was handing out relentless rats and I hope you were able to get one for me. So anyways, friends, uh, have a great rest of your stream. Serge, miss your face. Uh, there's a lot of chocolate in this room. Oh my God. We didn't even, we even we talk bought. about the chocolate. Wait, yeah, wait, wait. The stuff we bought for you and Nadine, and it's now here, and I have to somehow. Yeah, this so was fun. the last thing we did in Zurich. Uh, they made me hold all of the bags while they hit the last lint shop in the country, and and Olivia bought literal, actual kilos, like kilos, <laughs> of chocolate to take home. Just, oh God, I'm using those for tokens in the room. <laughs> and then all this. Yeah. Much Chaco. We can get lints so in Vancouver. Apparently it's different. Nadine assured us that the Nadine, chocolate yeah, that they Nadine export. Assured us that yeah. The lint was different. We did get multiple flavors because obviously you do not see all these colors uh, North America side. So there's like matcha ones and double chocolate and like, oh, I got Serge a hazelnut cone and he refused it because there was toasted rice on it like a jerk. I tried to get him something nice. Uh, well, why is it with you and not with me then? 
Because I offered it to you and you never took it. You're like, I don't know, it's got toasted rice. So I bought it anyway and you rejected my kindness. Um, and then there was the Lotta Rock ones that Nadine made us get, I'm so sad we didn't eat those. Specific. We, we, we Listen, over snacked. Now I have to. Uh, um, yeah. We also forgot the truffles I bought. Yeah, watch out. I'm coming to LA for my share. <laughs> Hurry up because I can only go as slow as I can. Uh, and then we got a bunch of bar chocolates. And then uh, Nadine said, there's a bunch of like milk ones. We don't get the cool stuff. And then I got some intense fig and caramel sea salt. <laughs> anyway, I'm going to go record this. Yeah, go, go, go to your job. Tokens and try to convince myself to not annihilate this chocolate right now. Thank you, friend. So. Goodbye. Bye, Have a good one. Talk to you soon. Yeah, absolutely. Ciao. Okay, bye. My heart. My heart. Oh. All right. Uh, hi. It's just me now. First off, Dead Pine. Thank you so much for the raid, buddy. I miss you. I was watching you uh, doing a little bit of Sky Vaults earlier this morning. Um, hi, sweetie. Yeah, so... Thank you. Thank you again for that. Uh, just as a quick recap, I just got back from two weeks in Europe and I'm sharing stories and uh, friends may join. And so if you don't know already, uh, that's Olivia Gobert Hicks. Um, she is a just extremely, extremely delightful human. Uh, she's a cosplayer down at conventions. She's on two different Magic Commander YouTube channels. So you can check her out at Elder Dragon and Hijinks as well as um, Commander at Home. Yeah, find her on Twitter, find her on Instagram, find her on YouTube. Uh, find her in my heart. Oh. <laughs> oh. Yeah. She signed your squirrel tokens. Uh, Sora, thank you so much for the 500 biddies too. Insert semi-regular hydration check to streamer and chat here. Thank you. Enjoy it. Happy to see that you enjoyed the trip and the traveling is the best. Traveling is the best. Honestly, this is, it's very hard to adjust to being back. I, sorry, I love you. Hi. No, <laughs> Joe from the other room. <laughs> Joe, I'm so sorry. That's not what I meant. <laughs> I missed you too. That. <laughs> oh no. Holy moly. You are not disrespected. That's not what I meant. My biggest regret that you weren't there. Oh my God. Yeah. Joe's such an absolute, absolute legend. So I guess like we could keep going chronologically in the story. Like we're in the South of England at this point and everything is amazing. We could jump back to stories of the actual convention. Like we could talk about magic. We do have Dead Pine here and we had Vince Raid earlier. We could talk about the convention part. What What do you want to hear about? What's your, what are you most curious about? Because I don't want to necessarily just go with the flow and narrate this whole thing. But, you know, I, I want to share. I want this to be a journey together, right? We have we have covered Switzerland though. Did I already talk about the coffee? We could talk about just the coffee if we wanted to. This Joe Search dynamic is going to be me and my partner when he gets back from a two week vacation he's on right now. Amazing. What were the fans in Barcelona like? Oh my God. Great question, Shiva. So one of the things that I was shocked about is how many Loading Ready Run fans are Portuguese. Would not have guessed that. And specifically, that's because um, it's not a, a primarily English-speaking country, which was, like, just fascinating to me. I was just like, why Portugal? And they're like, well, <laughs> uh, apparently Portuguese YouTubers are bad, <laughs> is what they <laughs> Was the TLDR about it? They're like, yeah, we find your content. Uh, we all learn English in school. And and yeah, like the vast majority of the of the content we watch is just like English streamers, English YouTubers, and we do that. And the Portuguese were so competitive, uh, specifically about coffee. 
and they'd be like, how's the Spanish coffee? And I'd be like, yeah, it's really good. They're like, no, it's crap. You want good coffee? You come to Portugal. I'm like, whoa. And they're like, yeah, you don't know anything about coffee until you've had Portuguese coffee. And I'm like, all right, all right. I'm in, I'm down. <laughs> Zeus and Chappie like, yeah, you know it. Yeah. Laurel also has a huge German fan base for sure too. Oh man. Okay. I'm jumping all over the place now. Um, I had one interaction. You weren't the only one, Zeus. You were not the only person who said that. So many Portuguese fans I talked about had the same story, which was very funny to me. <laughs> um, so I was in London and probably the saddest day I had of the entire trip was the day the girls went to Edinburgh and I went to the south to go hang out with Uno, which is not to say in any ways that I'm sad that I was hanging out with Uno. But after being so close to the girls all the time, I woke up. Um, they had to catch like a stupid early train to get out of town. And then I had to wander to the train station and then take the train all the way down. It was like a two hour train to Winchester. So anyways, I'm at King's Cross station in London. And there is a coffee shop there, which was on my list to check out called Kiss the Hippo, which is a very interesting name for a cafe they have, but Kiss the Hippo Coffee. And I, it's like starting to rain because of course it is. It's like the most peak English experience ever. Hold on, let me, I don't even find myself anymore. Pardon me. Oh, please, sweetie. Yeah. So it's pouring. Oh, there's still a camera there. Hold on. Let me. So it's pouring rain. I'm outside of the train stations at King Cross. I'm waiting for a cafe to open. 30 minutes standing in the rain alone because the girls have left and my heart is sinking and I miss them so much. I did not expect to miss them that hard, but there we go. And the... After waiting 30 minutes, it's supposed to, I could get there at 8 a.m. It's supposed to open at 8.30. <laughs> and after waiting 40 minutes, so 30 minutes for it to open, an additional 10 minutes, they just never showed up. Like, whoever was opening the cafe that day on a Saturday morning was like, yeah, nah, I'm just not going to go to work today. <laughs> I mean, it's just raining, yeah. I just, I just leave. I just leave. I'm heartbroken. And... <laughs> I go to get on the train, uh, and so I have to cra I have to go from King's Cross to Waterloo Station, and then take the train down. Like I'm out of it. I'm kind of sad. I'm kind of mopey, and I check my my Twitter messages, and there's a, res a reply to that tweet, and somebody's just like, "Oh my God, that was you," and I'm like, "What?" And they're like, "Yeah, I almost literally like ran into you on the tube." And then I didn't know if it was you. And I just kind of stared like too long. I'm like, okay, what? And then I left and then I checked Twitter. I'm like, oh my God, it's you. I didn't know you were in England. I'm like, oh, you should have said hello. And then <laughs> I love this response. They're like, no, you absolutely do not ever talk to a stranger <laughs> when you're on the train in London. And I'm like, oh wow, this most peak experience ever is happening here of like, Stuck in the rain, don't get a coffee, run into a person, and they refuse to talk to you, and you have this missing opportunity. I'm like, wow, okay, well, thank you for sending me a message on Twitter afterwards to delay the <laughs> For whatever reason, that made me that made me very, very, very happy. And uh, I told my buddy afterwards who's living in london he's like yes every part of that was peak english the day is saved all right well let me let me continue the story from that part so um i'm at the winchester winchester train station i'm sad i'm alone uh where, where'd my photos go i'm sad i'm alone and um i'm super early yo what's up chaos how you doing buddy I've got no friends. I've got no room in my heart. Uh, and so I get on the train 45 minutes early to go hang out with Uno. 
who has actually booked a hotel. This was super sweet. And you know how like my part of the journey was super chaotic and I didn't know where I was gonna stay or anything like that. Uno was trying to be like, I want to see you. Tell me where you're gonna be. And I'm like, I can't. And he's finally like, okay, you know what? I've booked a hotel in Winchester, you come see me. <laughs> so I thought it was fair enough. Um, so I hop the train, I'm super early. I need to find a place to hang out. And I find this absolutely delightful coffee shop in Winchester, and it was called the Coffee Lab, I think is what it was called. Coffee Lab Academy? Hold on, let me look it up on Google Maps, because I didn't actually save it. Um, Winchester Maps. I don't actually know Winchester well enough to know what I'm looking at here. Where's the train station? Everything makes sense from the train station. How do I close this? Yes. Good. No, go away. Um, is this the train line? This? Maybe? Yes, Winchester train. Okay. I got out here, and then I walked, I think this way. I think this way, and then down into a little alleyway here. Yes, right there. I found it. Haha. -ha. Coffee Lab Academy. And this place was actually incredible. So surreal seeing Winchester here. So another thing that was wild to me was how many English people follow me on social media. Because I'd post about being in a place in London and I'd be like, oh, you're in London. We'll head down to Chichester or whatever and I'll take you out for a pint or just <laughs> a lot of a lot of competition in England. Where if you say you're somewhere else, they're like, no, 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 no. You need to go three towns down and I'll show you a better experience. So I find this super, super cute coffee shop. And I basically set up here for like the better part of an hour because I'm earlier than I than I, I knew I was going to be. And Uno said we're gonna have to wait anyways. And so I basically just rent this table by getting myself uh, coffees and baked goods. And I hadn't really had a chance to check out any coffee in England prior to this. So this is literally my first coffee shop in England. It's called the Coffee Lab Academy and it was great. So they've got, we'll zoom in here. They've got a uh, little espresso setup. They've got a like pour over bar. They've got really good baked goods and stuff like this. So yeah, I ordered a pour over. Oh my God, I met this very good Sheba. Look at it. Yes, I got to feed it a snack. Oh, did I take a video? Yeah, I decided to go for the art shot. Just a very short video of steam coming out of it. This is what I was doing when I was bored. What is a pour over? So this is actually what the inside of like a basket brewer looks like if you just have a regular coffee maker. So pour over is you have a cone shaped filter. You have uh, the coffee sort of sitting in the bottom of it and you use water and you, you manually pour the water over the coffee uh, uh, the, the best way to think about something different is like a French press. So a French press would be an immersion in comparison. So the water and the beans are immersed together the whole time, where with a pour over, the water is percolating through it. So pour over V60, the rough idea of what you're doing there. Yeah. So I just got to have this like moment of serenity of just kind of sitting and chilling and realizing that I was sad and alone and then Uno showed up. <laughs> uh, there is Uno in the flesh. I couldn't believe it. He's real. Look at that very good Uno. Pardon me for a second here. Yeah. Uh, correct me if I'm off base, that's the manual version of a drip coffee machine. Exactly the same. Yeah, like a percolator or an auto brewer caffeine. You got it. And then, uh, and then, yeah. I love this photo because this is Uno being just so, so disappointed that he has an English tea and I'm drinking coffee. That's not his real accent. Yeah, weirdest thing. Uno's actually French. <laughs> I'm just showing <laughs> Uh, do I have another one there really quick? So apparently, 
Oh, I don't have more photos of that. That's fine. So apparently we had an extremely English experience. Again, just like today is peak London. So we're having it. We're having a cup of tea and a coffee. And then we go through a walk um, through Winchester, basically heading down to town. And ooh, I can actually show you on the map where we're walking. One sec. So if anybody knows or cares, uh, where were we? There's the coffee lab. So this is just like this beautiful street and it's walking only. So I wish I had a photo of this. Oh, I do. Yeah. So it's like beautiful cobble streets. The buildings are overhanging and up ahead down there, there's a street market that's happening and you can see the rain. So we, we stop in the market. We have like some samosas. We get, um, we get some like Chinese food that's just made in a walk, like right there. And then we go to a museum and then our day goes, we're in the museum. It starts pouring rain. So we stop, we stop at the cafe in the museum for our second cup of tea of the day. And then the rain stops just long enough that we decide, okay, let's head outside. We're walking around the rain. It starts pouring again. Or like, oh no, what do we do? And Uno's like, there's a pub right here. Let's grab a pint. <laughs> so we go back into our third place. Uno has a pint. I get some wings and some tea. <laughs> and we're like, okay, we've rented our table for a little bit of time. Let's get outside. We start walking back the way we came. It starts raining again. So we're like, oh, this is too bad. Back to the cafe. Uno gets another pot of tea, <laughs> another coffee. And we're like, oh man, this is not sustainable. Like the rain, the weather is just not cooperating. So Uno's like, you know what? This was fun. This was kind of nice, but like I should go, I should go pick up the lady, the missus or whatever, whatever he said. Um, and he like, we hop in his car and then the sky opens up and it starts raining so hard. We're like, oh my God, like, it's flooding. Like, like this is actually kind of scary. The the weather is so 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 bad. We got so lucky uh, for the timing that we did to get into the car. He takes me to the train station, and I head back up. And uh, it was a very nice visit. And the wa the weather was just absolutely uncooperative. <laughs> All right, uh, I'm actually gonna have an early lunch right now. So here's the plan. I've got lasagna. I've been up since four in the morning, so I'm a little bit hungry. So let's transition from trip talk to the first lunch break back since I got back. Do I now understand why British, pe British people drink so much tea and beer? Yeah, because the weather sucks. <laughs> Am I going to Vegas? No. You know what? This is a great segue. I am, while we're having lunch, and we can sort of chill for a second, I have a very important life update that I would like to share with everybody. Uh, Joe and I are moving. Uh, we finally talked for ages and ages and ages about how small our little apartment is. We've been in the same place for nine years. And we finally found a larger apartment that we're going to, not to Europe. No, 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 no. We're going from like an 800 square foot place to a 1300 square foot place. And our moving date is September 18th. Coming to Portland, that'd be amazing. September 18th. Vegas is September 22nd. So that is uh, that is just absolutely not going to work, unfortunately. Uh... <laughs> All right. Uh, let's get into the full story because I've talked about this too. Yeah, moving to Jersey. All right. So things got a little bit messed up. Things got a little bit messed up with everything, um, which is kind of wild. So our we had this moving date figured out. Everything was rad. Everything was fantastic. We thought everything was locked in. And we, we also, because we knew all this, we like booked movers. We got out of our place. Everything was locked so that we were going to be leaving. And then we found out the place that we're moving into is not going to be ready for a while. Uh, so I found this out on Friday before flying to Barcelona on Monday that I was effectively going to be homeless in September. 
uh, which was very stressful. Uh, and so, I just want to give the Coles notes because I want to eat this lasagna. Long story short, uh, <laughs> Joe and I are putting all of our stuff into storage. Um, we're packing basically the streaming office into the car. We're driving a thousand kilometers and I'm moving back in with my parents. So you're going to, September is going to be weird. Um, I'm going to be streaming out of my parents' place. There's, it, yeah, there's, there's going to be a whole bunch of chaos. And I kept talking. From <laughs> Oof, my mom. Yay. <laughs> yeah, there is, man. Um, I mean, obviously I can't not talk about the move because it's going to be pretty wild. Yeah, you like the Joe takeover. Wait till you see the 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 mummy <laughs> mummy the takeover. Yeah, they're upgrading the internet for us. So technically, she's not Mum Jaeger. She kept her last name, but yeah. Hmm. Alessandra, thank you so much, so so much for the twelve months. Hope you enjoy your butter bean. So yeah, um, I think that now gets to the point of, I was talking about in the months leading up to this, how much stuff I was juggling like off camera and how everything was tough. Yeah, we're moving back to Victoria afterwards. Um, this is obviously going to be a little bit challenging with my loading ready run work. I've been talking to Graham and Beej and sort of, sort of figuring this, all this stuff out, but yeah, it's, uh, yeah. The real-time mum comments on stream. Yeah. Yeah. So look forward to that. <laughs> I've never had to move an entire studio before. So that's going to be kind of wild. Ooh. Vancouver tomorrow until Sunday morning. First time in Canada. I hope you have a great time. They'll be skiing. I hope so. So we're going to be packing our clothes, my ski stuff, because if I'm going to be in the Rockies, one of my like bucket list things that I wish I had done when I was younger and I never got a chance to do. I always wished I had been like a ski bum for a season that I had like worked and lived for super cheap in the mountains and I could just go whenever. And uh, there's a chance maybe that I'll be like, you know what, chat? Sorry. Sorry. I'm uh, no stream today. A lot of snow last night. I'm out. <laughs> we'll see. Did I work at a ski resort? No. No. I had... I had an opportunity to, to maybe work for like a really nice cat skiing operation. Because I was good enough at skiing and stuff. Yeah, that was the lie for the lure bit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Be an 80s movie, challenge the local ski instructor. I love it. <clears throat> it's a little tough because I'm there in September and the ski resorts don't open until November, so not a lot of stuff, but yeah. How long will I be away from Victoria? Until December. So I have plans to fly back because obviously there are some big things that I'm involved with that I can't do remotely. So like PPRs, for example, I'll be I'll be heading back to town for and figuring out stuff. But there's a lot of there's a lot of things that I don't have the full details for right now. So I uh, I cannot mention like the exact specifics on how things will work out. But the coffee pong, we'll, we'll just wait. We will just wait. Yeah. So yeah, there's, uh, there's my life and my updates. Any questions? Is Joe moving with me? Yes. You know, no biggies, just mid to late thirties, moving back in with my, in my parents. With my partner. <laughs> oh, 
No, this is yeah, this is a this is a team trip. Hmm. This lasagna is spectacular. One sec. Texting my mum. Oh, did you? Yeah. You need to play Vemba? Hold on. In Indian culture, we call that this is what you do after you get married. What's Vemba? That's very funny to me. Vemba is so awesome. Oh, wait, 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 wait. Is that the new narrative game that just came out? I think I saw Rami tweeting about that. Look, I was I was traveling for a while. I'm kind of out of the loop on everything. Did anything happen? Magic have any discourse? No. Vemba's an hour-long game about an Indian woman's life. It's an hour long and it's wonderful. It's an indie game from Toronto about Indian Tamil culture and cooking. Delightful. I love that. Magic always has discourse. Yeah. <laughs> hey, what's up, Yalk? Am I going to share any of that good coffee with my parents? Unfortunately, it's all going to be done before we see them. should check that out. God, I got so many games to check out. Oh my goodness. Speaking of new games, I think my poor computer is dying, which is not good. So for the vast, vast majority of what I do, I don't experience any issues. Obviously, like I'm live streaming. I was able to get Olivia into the call. Just stepped in something. It had nothing to do with my computer. And all that worked. But like, <laughs> if you try turning it on, on again, thanks. But, um... Specifically, new games. I'm getting like video stuttering, and it's it's making it really hard to play them. So I had it with Diablo 4, and I just assumed that Diablo 4 was laggy because it was kind of an MMO thing, and there was a bunch of issues, which was really tough. And then I tried playing Baldur's Gate 3, which worked fine when I played the the demo. But when I tried playing it now, because that's the new hotness and what literally everybody's talking about, I had just, again, all this awful, like, video tearing, gameplay stuttering in both the cutscenes and the actual game. And uh, I'm going to be taking my computer to the doctor on Friday. And hopefully, hopefully everything works out there. Yeah, simply turning it off and on again isn't going to help all. But thank you. <laughs> So yeah, um, I, I've got an express. Is the doctor named Paul? No, my buddy Paul was in you know, a dingus. <laughs> yeah. Ball is great, runs great on my machine, but the launcher doesn't, so I can't actually start at the moment. Brutal. Wait, you've also been having a stutter with Baldur's Gate 3, mainly in high NPC population areas. No, 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 no. Literally the starting area, the starting cutscene, everything. Like, no part of the game has ever been smooth caffeine. And so... Um, we think it might be like a like a heating issue or the power source is starting to get old or something like that because it, it's very it's very odd i've tried windowed mode not windowed mode v syncs um basically going through like every single google of like what graphic settings can i change and stuff like that and so we're going to we're going to try and see if maybe something else is happening so i'm basically going to give it to the pros and let them diagnose it. And hopefully I don't lose, like Friday I don't stream and Saturday I have Lur stuff. So like, it's not that disruptive to the schedule. I don't want any more downtime because I've been gone for two weeks <laughs> is what I'm, what I'm trying to say. 
Yo, what up, T-Plane? Thank you for the Prime. Time for a repaste and new PS PSU, possibly? Yeah, we'll see. So the, like, my computer is pretty good. If you, if you go to the specs, because I've got, like, the specs of the PC listed down below. Where is that? You're like... This is, this is a pretty beefy little computer, you know? So, I'm under the impression that it should be running better than it does. Looks like your case got a case of the goblins. Yeah. Wait. No, Paul. Paul. <laughs> you. <laughs> How dare you? Close? Not today, Satan. Nice try. Nice try. There was an echo there for a second, pardon me. Nice try, Paul. <laughs> so yeah, the computer... Yeah, I had the stream page open. I, I know where the issue was. The computer is, in theory, good enough that I shouldn't be having these issues, which means there's probably something going on. All right. I want to tell, I want to tell, because Paul's here, I want to tell a magic story for all of you at the convention. And I guess we'll, we'll do, let's do coffee from top to bottom, which I think is kind of cool. Is it just Baldur's Gate? No, it's also Diablo 4 are the two games that it's growing up, but everything else is fine. All right. Story time. So one of the really cool things that Wizards of the Coast had me do when I was at MagicCon Barcelona is I had a bunch of product. They gave me like boosties. I had straight up one of the new commander decks. I had collector boosties, whatever. And anytime, basically anytime I want, they gave me a lot of freedom for it. I could just like show up to people and make their day better by being like, bam, have some free stuff. And that was really cool. <laughs> that was really, really cool. So for example, on the first day, I think I'd been in the convention center for like 45 minutes. Yeah, burnt flapjack. Met them right away and I was like, bam, here you go. And like, <laughs> um, so I, I, I met some fans and they asked me to sign a card and I didn't have a Sharpie. And I was just like, oh, thanks. They let me borrow one. And I was like, man, I really wish I had one. And the guy was like, you know what? Just keep it, have it. Like, I don't need it. You might run into other fans and have to sign it. It's like, Wow, that's so great. That's so generous. Thank you very much. Here, and I reached into my bag and I pulled out one of the brand new pre-con uh, commander decks. And it was the uh, the Planeswalker one. Hold on. Ordering. No. There's the sliver. What were What was this set of Planeswalker decks called? Help me out. Uh, sorry, the commander decks. The new four, there's the sliver deck. There was the Eldrazi deck. What was, what was this? What was this series of pre-cons called? Party something? Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. Anyways, yeah, they hand me a Sharpie. I'm like, wow, thank you so much. Uh, that's really nice of you here. Oh, the Commander Masters pre-con. Yeah, 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 yeah. And just gave them one of the Commander Masters pre-con. And the guy's just like, what? I'm like, yeah, you know what? I had to give this to somebody. Have a great time. I really enjoy it. And then his buddy is like, I got a Sharpie as well. I'm like, yeah, sorry, bud. Just had the one Commander deck. So, I don't know. That made me... <laughs> Alright. Um, this is a story I already told Paul, who's apparently never heard of magic before. So, one of the things that I really wanted to do was I don't, just, like, support young women in magic. Because, unfortunately, reality of magic at conventions sometimes is they get gatekept. You know, they want to have a good time. And um, <clears throat> they're not always given the opportunity to. 
And so I've got a March of the Machines sealed box of the collector boosties. And I'm just waiting for the right opportunity to like hand this jackpot prize to somebody. Sealed, right? There, I don't know how many packs are in that. And at the last day of the convention, I have run out of time. I have, I'm like walking out and I still have it in my backpack and I'm like, I can't keep this. That is just so sketchy. There's like no universe in which I'm going to keep this product that's been given to me for somebody else. And so I'm looking around and I'm just like, you. And I see this 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 uh, this young girl walking by herself. I'm like, awesome. I'm gonna choose you. So I walk up. I'm like, hey, excuse me. Just like random dude startling this person. She's like, yeah. I'm like, very weird. Can I give you some product? And she's like, sure. I'm like, great. Here you go. And I hand her the the sealed thing. And she like looks down for a second and she's like, what is this? I'm like, pardon? She's like, yeah, uh, I don't play magic. I'm just here with my boyfriend. And I'm just like, no! What are the, cause that's like, that's the gate kept. <laughs> the thing you're trying to avoid of just like not letting people in. I just, just like, <laughs> and I'm like, all right, you know what? He's going to be really happy. I hope you have a fantastic convention. Have a good one. I that, Oh, yeah, maybe this gets them into it. That was very, very, very funny to me. The real joke is, as I was telling, as Serge was telling me the story, I called it. Yeah, I was telling Paul the story. He's like, Paul's like, yeah, the classic gatekeeping of a girl can't enjoy magic. She's just there with her boyfriend. It was very funny. Oops, pardon me. I need to clarify very quickly just in case people don't don't get the wrong don't get the wrong part of that the whole goal was to fight stereotypes I just, there's no there's no nuance here i can't hear your voices we we all on the same page okay cool <laughs> uh the attempt was made i handed out so much product it was actually really cool one of those instances where hey do you play might have been a good opener i i i don't i don't want to do that well actually it's funny because i was um i was playing in gavin verahey's unknown event which was very cool by the way if you're at a convention you get a chance check it out and i was sitting across from this young lady and i hate that i'm old enough now that i say young lady it's like way to go boomer i digress uh, and I tried to, I tried to test it out a little. I was just like, yo, on a scale of one to 10, how's your convention being in my mind thinking if she gives a low number, I'd, I'd hook her up. And then she's like, oh my God, like 15 out of 10. Uh, I was hanging out with one of the cosplayers and there was a big giveaway and I ended up winning a sealed, uh, secret layer package. And I was like, well, here's just some random packs to make it better instead of the big thing. Yeah, I kind of agree with I Amethyst with the don't lead with the hey do you play because again the assumption is why would they have to qualify if they play or not which is not at all what you want to do you want to make it welcoming and big. Um, yeah, like you'd never ask a dude of hey do you play and as such don't want to necessarily start with the assumption. Yeah, uh, Olivia gave me the pro tip of just find people who are already in a game. Should just bring a t-shirt cannon next time. Sure. <laughs> Yeah, like find a pod of people who are playing. That's what that's what Nelson did at some point too. He'd play like he'd find commander pods and be like, hey, sort this out amongst yourself, but like here's some extra prize support for the game that you're playing, which is kind of cool. Joe's saying, what if you ruin friendships by like too much sealed product and people fight over it? Ooh, excellent suggestion from my amethyst lead with like how long have you been playing or something like that yeah find a pod secret thunderdome for your entertainment oof so regardless that, that just made me that just made me smile but magicon barcelona was incredible absolutely incredible uh let's do some more photos i said i was going to talk about coffee and coffee i shall So, 
in Barcelona, uh, before I left, Joe, who's, you all know how amazing Joe is, Joe put together a list of every coffee shop that I should visit in Barcelona, which is very sweet. There's like a Google map of stuff. List one. And then I ran into my friends, David and Talia. Uh, Talia is a huge coffee nerd and also a uh, magic enthusiast. And David actually owns like a specialty chain of roasteries in Texas um, and is a, a magic enthusiast. And so we compared notes. There's my list. There's their list. And there were exactly four coffee shops on both of our lists that overlapped. And that became, <laughs> that became the list. That became the list of places to try and check out. And one of the, probably the, <laughs> the only major cult cult culture shock that I had the entire time when I was there. Like language, don't worry. Transit, no, don't care. The one thing that shocked me was, well, actually I can turn the music off now. The one thing that shocked me was their cafes don't open until like 8.30 or 10 a.m. or something ridiculous like that. Why? Who wants a coffee at 10? And it, it definitely feels like in Spain, they just took the entire normal schedule that a person would have and just shifted it over four hours. Like restaurants don't open until 8 p.m. for dinner or whatever. So this was this was very challenging for me because one, um, and I actually really enjoyed this. One, I had um an actual series of like contractual obligations from wizards of what I had to do at the convention. Like I was working the convention. And I I really liked that. But it meant that I had a call time. It had a very specific time that I had to be at the convention for. So the window is getting narrower, right? 8.30 is when it opens. I have to be back at the con for like 10. And two, the convention center is not in downtown Barcelona. It's actually uh, way further out. And I learned a Catalan word. Um, so it's in the Fira district. Uh, and Fira is the Catalan word for like event or basically, it's basically like the convention district. And so for example, the hotel I was staying at was called the Fira Renaissance which was very nice, by the way. So to get to coffee, we had to take the Barcelona train system, which was amazing, by the way. And it was about 22 to 30 minutes, depending on how well the trains lined up, from the hotel to the coffee district one way. <laughs> so I have this like 90 minute window, 30 minutes of which is spent one way for travel. So the window starts getting shorter and shorter and shorter. And then finally, the biggest thing that was a culture shock to me was Sunday cafes are just straight up closed. Did not like that. Did not like that one bit. <laughs> Coffee at 10 seems reasonable to me. Sure. <laughs> you know, that's fine. That's fine. Yeah. So the four places, uh, the first... <clears throat> was called Brightside, or Right Side, pardon me, which was very, very, very cute. And this was located down in the Gothic Quarter. And you can't, I can't actually step any further out because it was basically at the end of this, like, here's James at one end walking down. So you, like, walk down this cobblestone walkway. And then I guess I don't really have a photo in the other direction. Yeah. So, like, this is the sort of streets you're walking down to find these coffee shops, which is incredible. That's not cobblestone. What, what kind of stone is it? <laughs> but, yeah, I took this super cute photo of uh, James and Voxy while we were in there. Uh, David was actually very kind to buy me my first coffee, which was a Gesha on, the, on a pour-over, which was delightful. I got to take this photo with Krim. Did you see the freaks in the background? Yeah, apparently people were talking that I did a very good job of uh, framing the graffiti through the window as well. I don't know why I kept this photo. <laughs> Just people being people with the cafe door there. So yeah, that was coffee shop number one, right side. Absolutely delicious. Yeah, Barcelona market stuff. Coffee shop number two. Uh, this one was called Nomad. 
uh, and Nomad was once again down the end of this like absolutely stunning little walkway, right? Like little alleyways and everything. And while the first cafe, like this is probably, the interior is probably kind of recognizable, right? Like very clean, modern deco, espresso machine right there, right? Like there's a hot water tower and a menu. Everything's making sense. Nomad was so cool. So Nomad you walk into and it's basically just, this is the entirety of the cafe. There's bench seating, there's bar seating there. There's like three benches here. Um, if you had more than one person traveling with you, you're in trouble. And then this back wall, it's like you're in a market. So this is all of the bags that they have roasted, right? And the bag, you can see the, the bag prices if you just wanted the beans. But then the bags that they have opened and they're serving for the day, uh, they have a number beside. So you could get it hot or iced and basically just try those. And then they had a bunch of like other things on the menu. And one of the things that I did when I was in Spain was if I never saw it in the menu before, I had to try it. What's a shakerato? What's a guanabana brew, right? <laughs> so I'd be like, all right, hit me with the nicest coffee you have. So I tried the Tanzania Achacha Hills <laughs> and then a guanabana brew and a shakerato, right? Yeah, just tasted everything. This place was very cool. It was approximately 8 million degrees inside. It was so hot. It was so warm. Uh, but yeah, really, really, really cool. So you can see this is the pour over we had. And I guess I didn't upload the other photos we had in there. So yeah, absolutely incredible. Absolutely, absolutely, absolutely incredible. Uh, this was probably the most unique cafe we went to. Of course, we got the photos of the Salgada Familia. Oh my God. Did I tell you I got to meet famous YouTuber James Turner at the convention? Look how sweaty we are. Oh, what a guy. All right, the third cafe. The third cafe was called Slow Mo. And this would have been Saturday morning. Um, I, I So basically, uh, to all of my friends there, I put out a standing invitation I was like, here's what's going to happen. I'm going to be at breakfast at seven in the morning. I'm going to be in the hotel lobby at eight in the morning. And if you want to join for a coffee tour at 830, I'm leaving or no, no, a little bit before that, because we tried to get there for 830. It's like if you're in the hotel lobby for 8 a.m., you can join me. It's about 30 minutes to get there for 830. And we turn back and Kathleen, Kathleen. And I were coffee buddies. Just the two of us went out on an adventure this day, and it was absolutely delightful. Just her and I exploring downtown Barcelona first thing in the morning together and just like chatting and talking about whatever. Wait for the photo there. So this space was really interesting. And this is one of the few cafes that I went to twice. So baked goods, they've got a little roaster right here and some bag selection. And unfortunately, they didn't do single origin coffee. Everything they had was just espresso based. But in addition to this, oh yeah, little cap and stuff like this. Oh, right. Shoot. No crap. Uh, bloop. I've lost I've lost everything. I hit back and that was the wrong button to hit. So I can't see it on the menu, but I ended up getting, um, I think this is called like a Cascara Fizz or something like that. And again, just very deliberately going out of my way to try things that I've never tried before. And this was a, just an incredible drink. Big, big, big fan. And yeah, like, look at this. Look at the street we had to walk up to in order to get to this place. Like, isn't this stunning? I don't know. Coming from my, you know, Canadian background, every street I looked at in Barcelona was like, this is incredible. <laughs> was that a pool party? Yes. So one of, the, one of the photos you may have noticed is on the roof. <clears throat> Blip, one sec. On the roof of our hotel was this swimming pool. 
and it had just the most incredible view of downtown Barcelona. Like, look at this. And basically, as soon as we were done from the convention, it was always, we just hung out here. There was a bar for the people who were interested in adult beverages. And we just like, if it was too warm, we had our toes in the pool. We just sat, we chat, we chilled. Uh, this was, I, I don't even have words to talk about it. It was just so, so, so very special. And on the first day we were there, I got to take this photo of all the friends. This was the crew that I like, I explored Barcelona with on day one. And yeah, I'm, yeah, my heart is so full. <laughs> oh, my heart is so full. And the fourth cafe, so the final day, um, this was Nelson and I got out of the convention a little bit later, and then James and a bunch of people dipped out. I went to go see the Sagrada Familia on this day because he's talked about it a little bit. He made a mistake with the programming <laughs> and showed up a different time. And this coffee shop was called, we hit Slow Move, we hit Right Side, we hit Nomad. This one was called Three Marks, like, like the number three, and then like the name Mark. <laughs> Three Marks Coffee. And so Nelly and I went together because we left a convention at the same time on how to have a cafe thing. And then this, this coffee shop was just down the road from the Sagrada Familia. And so you could see, ordered a bunch of espresso tonic, cold brew, uh, a brew coffee. And then all of the friends joined. So we went upstairs and then we all just kind of like hung out and had coffee together and then had like a little bit of adventure. We had our last dinner together in Barcelona. And my absolute, absolute favorite number one photo from the entire trip was this. Just this photo that we all took in front of the L'Arc de Triomphe. Love it. My heart. Oh, my heart so full. So, yeah. Absolutely killer coffee in Barcelona. Killer cafes or coffee. I kind of just said carfe, which is not a word. Oh, by the way, uh, I don't know how many people saw this on social media, but I had the most ridiculous, <laughs> the most ridiculous luck when it came to cracking packs at the convention. <laughs> oh my God. Isn't the Arc de Triomphe in France? Did you know they built more than one? Turns out they didn't just make one. <laughs> They're all over the place. Yeah, so I opened, I cracked this in a boosty. Um, and I didn't know what this was. And maybe some of you in chat also don't know what this was. But there were, there were um, in the... Lord of the Rings sealed packs, a whole series of extra rings that were made. Uh, no, this isn't a one ring. This is a Sol ring. And what they did is they made 9,000 human rings, 7,000 dwarven rings, 3,000 elvish rings. And then there are serialized foil versions, 900 human, 700 dwarf, 300 elven and then of course one ring to rule them all which is the one of one ring which was at the end of it i didn't know that and so i opened this and i was like what am i looking at and the answer is uh about uh, 160 euros <laughs> 160 euros is what i'm looking at uh so i sold this immediately to a vendor and uh, that felt kind of cool. That paid off most of the meals that I'd had in Spain so far, the days before that. Funded my, yeah, funded my coffee journey, journey a little. And then the day after that, in Gavin's sealed event, I opened the, this is a full art, alternate art foil sol ring in Commander's Masters. And this one wasn't as much. I sold this one, I think, for like 20 euros or something like that. Don't I have a masterpiece ring? Yeah. Well, that's why that's why I didn't want to hold on to this one. So I sold these two. 
This one's actually cooler. Yeah. I mean, it's pretty, it's very pretty. But yeah, I ended up, I ended up basically offloading all of my magic cards to fund my trip. So not all, like the ones that I opened, not the other ones. By law, I have to do whatever post he sells, says. Joke's on you. I sold this ring. He rules someone else. <clears throat> That's some Dees pack luck. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Yeah. Oh, man. Sorry. <laughs> One other thing. Uh, James, Ben, and I signed up for an event together. Oh, you could just see. Look how warm we are inside of the convention center, right? Oh. Uh. We, we all tried to sign up for a an event, and we got put in the same draft pod. And we're like, really? We kind of wanted to be spread out, so that was funny. But yeah. Wait, I left. You got a fancy Sol Ring? I got two fancy Sol Rings, Shivam. I got the non-serialized human Lord of the Rings ring, and I also got from Commander Masters a full art extended foil Sol Ring. So... <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, dog. Yeah. Oh. One sec. I'm getting messages. Very fancy and welcome back. Yeah. Sudden bursts of planning. All right. What do you want to know about? Oh. I mean, it should probably be this, right? Did you go to the Sagrada Familia? The answer is yes. <laughs> so if you don't know what this is, uh, because I didn't know what this is, there is an extremely famous Spanish architect named Gaudi. Gaudi, not Gaudi, Gaudi. And he has designed some very, very, very cool things all over Spain. And this is probably the most famous. Um, this is a giant cathedral dedicated to Jesus and the apostles and all kinds of stuff like that. Like, it's, it's, it's wild. Um, and it has been in under construction for like 140 years, 160 years or something like that. So... In 2026, it will have been 100 years since the death of the architect, just to talk about how long it has been taking to do stuff. And something that's something that's very, very sad about this, and I, I didn't know this at the time, is um, he was so... 141 years, according to Wikipedia. Thank you. I couldn't remember the exact date. He was so obsessed with his work um, that he let every single other part of his life slip. And one day, um, he was walking to the cathedral to basically check in on how the construction was going and got hit by a bus. And because he let every other part of his life that was an architecture slip, they thought he was a homeless guy. Like just a random homeless person that walked in front of a bus. He was alone in the hospital for three days until he died, basically alone with nobody, knew, nobody knowing who he was until they found out after the fact what had happened. And one of the reasons that the construction has taken so long to finish is he never actually had a complete, like, version of the whole thing. It's very sad. It's heartbreaking, right? Like, the plans weren't done. Ben, Ben. Hi, my friend. Yo, we share in, uh, we share in trip plans and photos and stories. How are you? I miss you. 
I, I feel like I haven't seen you in like 17 years. What's up, everybody? We're talking about the Salgada Familia. Pardon my terrible pronunciation. Hope you had a great stream today, friendo. You never heard the bus story? Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> Apparently I wasn't paying attention to time changes and kept like texting Joe while she was trying to work and stream while I was gone. So when people found out that we were in Barcelona, everybody, everybody, everybody said, you have to go. You have to go. Like, you have to see this. And there are a lot of tourist attractions that people say, and you kind of shrug and you go like, you know, sure, whatever. Um, you have to see this. It is awe-inspiring. It is just, ap uh, I... <laughs> It is so extra. It is so wild. It, <laughs> it's also amazing because you can see the parts that are like hundreds of years old and how the construction has changed and how that we go. And one of the amazing things is like if you've pictured European cathedrals and stuff like that, you are, you're not ready for this because it's and my photos are not going to do it justice. So you walk up and you're like, okay, this is, this is a lot, right? Like, like the detailing of characters and just like the shape of the windows. You're like, okay, wow. This is, this is like a lot, a lot. And then you get inside, <laughs> then you get inside. That is not what I wanted to do. So I got a Familia is sick. It's, hold on. I think I have a better video later on. Oh yeah, I got it when the organ was playing. Like, I don't know, you just, you can't, you can't do it justice. Like, it's enormous. And one of the things that was really, really, really wild to me is how modern the architecture is. Right? Like, look at these, look at these angles, look at these shapes, like the out, the out, the outside, the outside, you could describe as gothic, but the interior, like, I, it's, look at these angles, right? And um, one of the ways that it was designed is when the sun hits the stained glass, it throws light everywhere. Like this is, this is the light being cast from there. Um, and to sort of talk about the, like the modern style, like look at the, the, the depiction of these characters, right? These are, these are the statues on the other side. It's, <laughs> how was this designed 150 years ago? You know what I mean? Like this looks this looks like we're watching a a sci-fi movie and they're talking about depictions of like a future lost civilization or something like that. You know what I mean? But yeah. Just <laughs> 
Reminded you of like Elish Norn stuff? I kind of did. Like it's got Geiger vibes. It's got Phyrexian vibes. It's, yeah, it's, which is terrible ways to describe it. I don't even, I don't even know, you know? It's so hard to try and take pictures of this place. I wish I had made this slightly more level. Also, it was very challenging uh, when you have these very large symmetrical buildings to try and get symmetrical photos. So you could see like it's not quite perfectly lined up there. So when you have conversations about tourist attractions that you have to check out, this one, absolutely, 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 you should see. Uh, just stunning. So this is, and as people mentioned, it's, it's kind of challenging that this is now a museum first and a place of worship second. And they've put in pews, but like cameras everywhere. Right. And I think they I don't even know if they ever try and hold mass here. Occasionally the organ will play. And it's I got I actually got shivers and goosebumps when the organ started playing in here. It was wild. Not only 140 years old, it's probably one of the youngest big European church buildings. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> to put this into perspective, Picasso was born in 1881. Wild. Oh, do they close it for mass? Thank you. I didn't know that. That makes sense. I mean, yeah, it'd be, it would be kind of sad if this place, because this place is obviously meant as a place of worship and it's doesn't feel like that. So uh, to tease a little bit, um, there were all of these basically like Instagram models that were standing here by the pillars. And then when the light went away, they kind of just kind of stood around and chilled. And as soon as the light hit, <laughs> And the color came out, all these people started lining up for photos and trying to make it. It was very funny. On holy days and hours of Sundays, it's only worshipers can come in. Okay. Wow. I kind of love that, to be honest. So one of the cool things that we got to do, uh, because Graham was very organized and he booked tickets in advance, is um, if you go on the outside you can actually travel up some of these towers and then walk from one tower to the other. Um, trying to see if I can find it anywhere. Like stuff like this, right? You can go up a tower, cross these sky bridges, and then walk down or look up them and stuff like that, which is very, very, very special. And so we did that. And so this is like while we're up there, look at, you don't even get to see these details. Like... Uh, this is wine grapes. This is bread. Um, and apparently the, the, the high arcing goal of the architecture of this is there's one tower in the very center that represents Jesus. Then there are four towers around it for the four. I'm going to get some of the words wrong here and I apologize. Uh, the four main apostles. And then there are all of the other towers around it that also are supposed to symbolize like his close disciples. And so when you get up top, there's a lot of like really wild symbolism. Um, where'd that photo go? Yeah, like the, the spires of the towers. Sometimes it's like, this is, this is a bird with a bull's head and this is the star representing the thing. And, and here we have this like, these like ornate mosaics at the top of towers that no one would ever see. And it is an act of construction. Like you could see construction workers working on this while we're there. And this like very, these like mos the very modern looking mosaics and words and stuff everywhere. Uh, Song, thank you so much for the 22 friend. I really appreciate that. So yeah, we went all the way up, did this, did this adventure, got this view, like here, here's downtown Barcelona from the view up top there, right? And then the terrifying part, this descent was something like 400 steps wide open, straight down. And while it's an elevator ride up, and then you can like basically do this pilgrimage if you're not afraid of heights, you can take the elevator down if you're not feeling it. Um, and they're like, 
hold on to your phone or your glasses because people lose stuff all the time and you're just like death grip on this pipe doing the spiral all the way down. <laughs> uh. Yeah. Little spooky. Little spooky, that one. Can you slide the railing? Only if you have a death witch. <laughs> Don't recommend. The other says, each facade is a chapter of Jesus' life, with the entrance one being his birth, the unfinished main entrance being his life, and the one surge shown with the heart statues at the end, symbolizing his death. Yeah, they have, um, this is what Yandere also said earlier, they have uh, guided tours or audio tours. So they have a mobile app and you can put a speaker in and as you walk around, it gives you like updates on what everything means. Just so much symbolism. Tide Hollow Cat, thank you for the 39. Who am I and what did I do with Joe? I asked her very nicely if I could stream. Thank you. I checked. Yeah, I think this is one of my favorite photos that I took. Again, like, photos do not do it justice. You just cannot capture the way the light came through the windows. But at the same time, <laughs> you can capture the light hitting the buildings a little. So, like, the stained glass doesn't have the glow. But look at this, right? Like, just... Just wild. Wild, wild, wild. Uh, we got to see another bit of, of uh, Gaudi architecture. This was a hotel he designed downtown. Look at that door entrance, right? Look at the metal on the balconies. Look at the shape of this place. There's a giant light beacon and like weird statue bust just on the roof. It's like an Elish Norn hotel, very Geiger, right? Like, yeah, 150 years old. Wild stuff. I think that's most of the Barcelona stuff. Like the Magicon was fun. <laughs> I mean, all right, I got a bit of a story here. So here we have the um, the whole trip, right? It's like five in the morning. We're in Toronto. We're on the plane. This is our life. So Victoria to Vancouver, 30 minute flight, two hour layover. Vancouver to Toronto, four and a half hour flight, two hour layover. Toronto to Barcelona, eight-hour flight, 90 minutes to clear customs. At this point, I haven't slept for two days. I am so tired. I'm so out of it. It's 10 a.m. And as we walk into the hotel, instead of chilling and doing whatever, all these people are like, get in, loser. We're going to Barcelona. <laughs> and I got James standing right beside me. And like you could see just how exhausted Ben Nelson and I are. And of all the places to take us, they drag us to the bustling, busiest, like, street market in downtown Barcelona. And we're like, oh, my God. And I'm trying to navigate these crowds. I'm, like, overwhelmed. It's 8 million degrees. I'm absolutely <laughs> exhausted. The market, not great for introverts. Oh, my God. This place was so much. And I'm so tired and I'm so out of it. And this is when Olivia starts hitting me with <laughs> very endearingly like this. This I want to call it an inside joke. She's like, Serge, you've gone full NPC mode. Which was whenever, whenever I was kind of like spacing out or something, she's like, you've got NPC again. Where basically like it was basically an escort quest. I had no agency. I like I could only speak when spoken to. I was like walking into a wall. <laughs> She'd be like, "Oh, you idiot. <laughs> you poor, you poor precious child." And we ended up finding like look at this stuff. Just like foraged and tried to find food and meals. Pathing issues. Yeah, right? Oh. Oh my oh my god. By the way, 
Apologies. Look at, look at my eyes. This is how tired and just absolutely wrecked I am. I didn't realize my eyes got super bloodshot from this. Oh, I was so wiped. Very sane look. Yeah, this is, this is the look of a person who's having a good time. <laughs> Uh, man. Yeah. So I was so tired and crashing so hard. I was just like, hey, I'm so sorry. I want to go on an adventure, but like, I think I'm going to be sick. Like, I need to sit down. I need, I probably need a bathroom. Like, please. And then Krim was like, here, bud, one sec. And uh, went into a corner store and bought me a Powerade and I had a sip and it was like a light switch. Uh, I was so dehydrated I need and, and just like instantly felt better. And we kind of walked around and, and made it work. And had, this was probably too heavy of a meal for the first thing we ate. We had like croquettes and beef and Ben Ben got this like full on seafood platter with crab and stuff. I wasn't zooming in on the steak. I was zooming in on the seafood. Yeah, I know it was like a zoom in on Tappy's face, but you know, so it goes. Tappy going full Tappy. She's like, I need, yeah. She's like, yo, you done with that steak? Because there's still some stuff left there. Tappy, yes, that is Tappy of pocket bacon fame, sweetie. <laughs> oh, no, no, no. She said I could take this photo. Yeah, there's, there's a reason I'm sharing this. Serge, I have a picture from Goiko, but I cropped Voxia since I'm not sure she wants all these photos to be public. Well, so... Any photo that I have here that is of friends, I have checked in with people beforehand, right? I have probably twice as many photos than this that um, I don't have shared. Kind of for reasons on stuff like this. Yeah, like uh, a lot of these photos are, have also already been posted online. Like this photo's on Twitter. This photo's like, God, these, these two look so cute in this photo. And stuff like that. And there's general check-ins. And it turns out when you're traveling with a lot of people who constantly post photos onto the internet, consent is very important. And so we check in and be like, hey, what's public? What's private? What do we worry about? Uh, so for example, um, like Graham and Kathleen were traveling with Penelope. And you'll, you'll notice I'm not posting photos of Penelope everywhere because, you know, you don't post photos of your friend's kid to the internet without checking about it first. Yeah. Penelope was super cool. Yeah. Uh, yo, Milk, do you have Discord? Do you have me on Discord? Are you in my Discord? Step one, Milk. Hop on Discord. Step two, send me that photo. <laughs> and I will, uh, I'll share it. Oh, is that the photo Nadine took for us? I saw two pics with Penelope in them and both only have her back. Yes. And I, I checked for those before I shared them as well. I mean, this is one of my favorite photos. This was exploring Barcelona with everybody. And then Ben and Penelope kind of hanging out and taking the lead. <laughs> She's just the best. Yeah. Where's the Discord link? It doesn't work. Um, mods, could one of you help Milk out? Fire off a, a linky or something at your leisure. Yeah, just like a, like a direct link or something like that. We can try and help them out. We'll get in a second. What's up, Callie? Hey, everybody. Thank you so much for the warm welcome back, by the way. I did really miss you. There's a, there's the conflict, obviously, of having this absolutely incredible trip and then also being like, I missed this, right? I miss sharing and catching up and hanging out. So thank you. Thank you. Oh, by the way. Uh, after, God, a decade, I finally updated my Instagram 
profile. Look at this. That's that's good profile photo energy, right? I think that's cute. I got the dress shirt. Inspiring. Thank you. Riley took that photo. I think Milk was standing like here <laughs> when that photo was taken. Riley has a ridiculous phone camera. Well, that was my phone, but it was great because Riley's holding it and he's just like, all right, give me that photo with you looking into the mid distance. And I'm like, okay. <laughs> right? You don't always want the straight on shot. Sometimes you want the side profile. What do you think? Question. A while ago, you built a commander deck on stream and said it was for a later project. Has that later project happened? It's probably Elder Dragon Hijinks, Callie. Led by the wonderful Olivia and Ailey. Just message me the photo. Oh my god, this is a really cute photo. This was the final, final meal in Barcelona. I ate so much. We got Milk, Riley, Ben Ben, myself, Graham, and Voxy. Was this the selfie or was this the one that uh, Nadine took? Burger Squad. Nadine took them. Yeah. And then so if this was us here, there's another table right there. That was a, a bunch of other friends, which is very funny. Man. Oh, all of these friends. All of these friends. Did I have an optimal balance of rest and adventure? I don't think I had it. Rest is not the right way to think of that trip. I was so busy every day. There's two types of trips, right? You have the type of trip where you've got um, an itinerary and you're like hitting things. And then there's the other kind where you're like an all-inclusive. You just sit and you just vibe. And my trip was definitely the like we packed everything into every day. Um, the Barcelona port was definitely like a work vacation. So I had... Yeah, I had like obligations and call times and stuff that I had to do. And then once I got on the plane from Barcelona, then it was like full vacation. Full kind of chaos mode, which was great. When you were chilling for four days after, you just wanted to go to a monastery outside of Barcelona. And Riley was like, let's just walk around and have fun. Nice. Yeah, like what a great city. What a great... I. What a wild, wild, wild time. My plan is, going forward, any and all and every, yeah, that's the words, convention that happens in Europe, I want to try and go back. Because just what a, what a wild experience this was. Just what a wild and cool and super fun time. It's kind of tough. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> it was that good. So, so here's, here's the hard part that I'm trying to reconcile. I also recognize that this was my first major, major, my first major trip in three years. Basically my first time going really anywhere since the pandemic. So we, we have traveled to see family, which has been like pretty, pretty small scale. We didn't really do anything when we were there. We we're trying to be extra safe. So we just saw family, like ate in, kept it pretty chill. And this is the part that really shocks me. This was my first time outside of North America in a decade. Because in 2013, uh, we got our passports so that we could do like the big Asia trip that when Joe and I went to like Vietnam and Japan and all that stuff, which I've talked about, but like that's an old story now. And... But my passport expired. My 10-year passport expired, and I had to renew it for this trip. 
And it was wild to me to think that I hadn't really done, outside of like work to conventions and stuff like this, I hadn't really done a trip in a decade. So um, how much have I been to Europe before in general? So my nonna was from Italy. And I've gone over to Italy a couple of times. Um, one when I was very tiny. Uh, another time when my nonna passed away, we did this like big trip all across Italy, uh, visiting family with her ashes and then depositing her ashes in like the ancestral tomb, which is very cool. The fact that we have an ancestral tomb, my mom's side of the family. Uh, and then I think when I was like, God, I think the last, oh no, no, the last time I was in Europe, oh, this is a little embarrassing, would have been like, 2004, 2005, I had a very bad breakup. I was very, I was in a very emotionally sad place and I ran away to Scotland for a week. And uh, yeah, I went to Edinburgh and I think that would have been the last time I went traveling. This is pre-Joe, yes. <laughs> In 2004, you were one, and now I am, <laughs> and now I am dust. <laughs> like, <laughs> yo, Lilith, thank you so much for the butter bean, friend. No, 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 don't tell me, don't tell me your age, chat. Don't do this to me. How dare you? Yeah, I don't want, I don't want to know how old all you babies are, all right? We're all 39. Thank you, Milk. Perfect. <laughs> As a fellow old, I also don't know how the, Oh my god. As a fellow old, I was on... When I was on the plane from uh, Vancouver to Toronto, I was sitting next to like a 14-year-old and I was just like, how do I talk to you? Like, I know how to talk to, like, I don't know, seven-year-olds love me because they know I play Minecraft, but how do I talk to, like, the youth? And I was trying to, I was trying to make my headphones work with the, God, it was, like, such boomer energy. I was trying to make the headphones work with the in-TV thing, and I was just like, I can't, I can't figure out how this works. And this kid was like, did you try plugging it in? And I was like, oh my God, I thought the cable was wrong and I needed an adapter and kid just like, boop. And I just, I died a little, I just died. Oh man. Yeah. I, I can't even tell the story. I'm so ashamed. You were on a train across from a 16-year-old last night and she said you were the coolest person she'd ever met. Oh, hell yeah, Zed. That's awesome. I love that. Penelope talked about the Wii as a retro console. <laughs> Oof. Oh my god. <laughs> wow. Man, the kind of burns that only a seven-year-old can hit you with, right? Oh my god. Yo, Viscount, thank you for the hundred biddies. Oof. So I was playing with this retro console. Have you heard of it? The Wii? <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> uh. My love, could you hit me with some more water, please? Thank you, sweetie. <gasps> Yo! Amazing. All right, one sec. We're going to have another friend join. Please hold. Oh, yes. I got a message saying, lol, we're not Discord friends. Also, hi. <laughs> oh, cool. I broke stuff. 
Oh no, did I break everything? Uh. Hello, friend. Give me one second. I've broken everything. <laughs> oh no. I broke the stream. All right. Please hold. sure hello oh i did an okay job no that crop is <laughs> that crop is not great i hold on i fix it i fix it i fix it my horrible camera position no 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 you're great you're perfect it's me one sec Good enough. Hi. <laughs> Hashtag good enough. <laughs> how are you, my friend? Good. How are you? How Amazing. Uh, very quickly, this is Nadine, uh, also known as the super wonderful Nissa Cosplay and was my other just absolute legendary travel buddy yeah, while we were doing everything. Yeah, we had Olivia on for a little bit. Actually, very quickly. Um, I need to audio check you. Uh, tell me a very brief story. Uh, baguette fromage boeuf. Or French was so good. <laughs> and was never relevant because of French journey, unfortunately. Got cancelled. By riots. Yeah. Alright, how, how does Nadine sound? Is she good? How's that volume? I've been told to make you like 5% louder. You are now 5% louder. Hello? Yes, I tap for blue and black mana. Perfect. <laughs> is your shirt a dual land? Counts as both a swamp and an island? It is I, dual land. Today I'm <laughs> cosplaying as a dual land. I mean, this is, this is what you get when you have a professional cosplayer on the show. I can be anything. <laughs> <laughs> Sounding a bit French. Uh-oh. I mean, she is, French. she is swass, but swass. I sound French? Good lord. No. <laughs> okay, I'm going to assume that you are, you are perfect now. Hello, I miss you so much. How are you? I miss you too. It's only been like, what, two days? Yeah, Olivia and I started by talking about how jet lagged we were. How jet lagged are you? <laughs> I, I read your chat like story now. I've I've been super chat like before. I don't know if you've told chat, but uh, it's uh, <laughs> that was that was uh probably the best chat like story I've ever heard. I can't claim to be chat like I just flew over for one hour. I, I mean, I if awesome. if they don't mind, I'll I'll tell it again. I mentioned it very briefly <laughs> here. So I am I've had this a similar dream, a similar dream two days back to back now, where I'm in this weird liminal space. And I'm still traveling with Olivia and Nadine, but I'm also home. So sometimes Joe is there and I'll be like in a train station and then we'll get on a train and then that train will be in a hotel room, but that hotel room will also be my bedroom. And I'll just be like, where am I? And so basically last night in particular, I went to bed at 8.30. I was wide awake at 11 and I was just like, oh my God, why am I naked in the train station and just like ran out in my underwear and I was just like and then, <laughs> and then Joe was all like what what is happening and then oh it's yeah honestly I I get that too when I've been at like a very intense uh, or longer events that when I come home I'm almost like for a couple of nights I'm almost like stuck in a fever dream and like when I'm trying to sleep I I like uh, it's almost like I'm still at the event or something, and it's super weird, and it's just like the weirdest feeling. As if you're drunk, but you're really not. Hmm. One of the things that I'm actually amazed with while we were traveling together is I normally have like really bad insomnia, and I often wake up super disoriented, and that didn't happen in any of the places that we were traveling, which is very odd to me. That's neat. Yeah. I don't know. I I guess better than I. I was really worried about like, oh god, what if it's four in the morning and I can't sleep and I'm just like, 
going stir crazy. Well, I'm familiar with that. <laughs> oh no, that's uh, no. It's uh, after the first one or two nights, I I slept really good too. It's probably because our, our schedule or like our program was pretty packed, so I feel like our bodies were probably just tuckered out every night. I got to share a little bit of the photos of like mm -hmm. our Swiss journey. Uh, and really the, the, the part, just cause I've been, I've been going for like three, wow, three hours already. It's kind of wild. The part that I haven't really talked about too much is our England journey mm. and how all of that stuff worked about. But like, obviously if there's anything you want to touch on, if there's any stories you want to tell, you can, you, uh, you can... already, you already, uh, did you already cover all of your beautiful Sweden journey? I, I hadn't called it that. I was very good. Okay, so she's never going to let me forget this. At one point, at one point, I accidentally called Switzerland Sweden, and I will never I be able to live it down. Not <laughs> once, <laughs> once. Every single other time was deliberate, I promise. No, I think it got started because uh, an American friend called it that, and I, I made fun of it in front of you, and I think I just, I just gave you that that particular you put virus. it in my mind thank you for giving me an out thank you for trying to make me look You're good <laughs> no it's uh people always think that we're upset when that happens but it's really just incredibly entertaining well there are it's, like, it's a stereotype that americans can't tell us what's relent from sweden and you think like ah, it's just like it's just a stereotype like the internet has learned up until like by now but it still happens and it's amazing <laughs> There are these classic rivalries, like when Canadians are called Americans, we're like, what, what's that about, eh? Or if you confuse a, like a New Zealander and Australian, they get really upset. So I wanted to make sure we, we, we didn't oh, do a similar happened? thing. Yeah, they get, they get very it's upset so about this. I, I can imagine, like Australia and New Zealand is always also like very, like the names uh, of the countries are like very, very different. <laughs> <laughs> how Austria and Australia have to meet up every few months to swap misrouted mail is very funny to me what misrouted oh wow yeah all right you know what I haven't talked about at all if you're curious is the Salisbury trip if we want to if we want to start talking about all of this yes so I'll give I'll give some background and also uh, by way an introduction. Um, and there's a little bit of repetition for the people who've been here the whole time, but that's okay. So we planned this trip, air quotes, planned this trip very, <laughs> very, very loosely through a series of uh, Discord calls that never really worked in any concrete details uh, because, of course, there's a nine-hour time zone change between ourselves yeah. and Nadine, who's here pretty late in the evening so thank you for joining and then also um olivia and i have we have like very busy schedules so i think in total we maybe had like two hours of calls where we kind of came up with an itinerary but we never booked anything <laughs> and so we had plans for the swiss part of the trip which nadine was an absolute legend uh, like the things that you arranged for us to do are going to be probably some of my favorite memories of my entire life. So like, thank you for that. Oh, that's really cool. The glacier, the waterfalls and all that stuff. But we also had this random plan that we wanted to go to the UK. And very early on, as soon as we heard the UK, I was like, great, I'm booking my flight out of London because Beej insisted that he's like, hey, I need I need to book these flights now. Where are you flying out of? I was like, uh, London. And... <laughs> And that ended up being kind of a giant pain that everyone was kind of kind yeah. enough to accommodate. The, and, at the start, we had like plans that made, that made sense for y'all to fly out of London and then things changed and all of a sudden it was incredibly awkward. <laughs> things kept changing constantly and constantly and constantly. Like originally we were going to uh, stay at Nadine's place in Switzerland and then I found out she has cats and I'm super allergic to cats or like pivot. And then we're like, we're going to go to Paris because Olivia went to jewelry school in Paris and she wanted to show off like her favorite places. And then the riots happened. So we had to pivot. And then Nadine is like, I really, 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 really want to go to Edinburgh. And I was like, I don't know anything about that. And she's like, well, I'm going. We're going to figure it out. Look, <laughs> I had, there was exactly one thing that was important in Edinburgh and was none of the sites. <laughs> That's fair. Yeah, you got to go see friends. your buddy. Yeah. 
And I mean, a huge part of this trip was friendship, which is very important. Yes. So it's the day that we're supposed to go to England. Uh, and I will I will tell a very small details from this and anything that you want to add, go ahead and feel about it. And so we're in Zurich, we're having coffee and we're just like, why are we going to England? <laughs> Other than the fact that our, our, our flight, we've already paid for flights to London and our return flight is out of London. We're just like, what are we doing? Because we had these loose plans to see people down in the south. Um, one of our friends got sick. That was no longer an option. We didn't even have hotel rooms booked. We had no accommodations. We didn't know anything about what we were doing. And we're like, yeah, I so guess... All of a sudden we were like, hmm, is this really the best thing we could do with our time? Yeah. And yeah. and so originally we were talking to uh, Vince, a.k.a. Pleasant Kenobi, and he's like, yeah, 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 come down to the south of England. Uh, you should stay in either Winchester or Salisbury. It's pretty close to my place. It's near Stonehenge. We're like, okay, great. Maybe we can meet up with some people. This will be super fun. And then when we're actually trying to book accommodations, everything is full. Did I tell you, Nadine, that there was an F1 race? Like a huge, like big race day that was happening down there, which is why all the hotels were full. Where? Uh, just outside of Salisbury. Then it wasn't F1. Oh, really? Oh, pardon me. There's no me. race track here. Okay. I thought, there was, I thought there was a big like motor race sort of thing. Maybe it was an F1. No, the only racetrack in England that's really, or F1 racetrack that's really news in England is uh, uh, Silverstone. Maybe a rally? I, look, chat's agreeing. They're like, definitely not F1. Sorry. That way. We'll know soon. <laughs> if Uno's still around, he could tell me what it was. There was a race thing. A rally is possible. I have no idea about any rallies happening. Like, rally is just not covered enough for, for me to know, but uh, yeah. Okay. So there, there are some things it could have been, but I had the first one wrong. Uh, F1 might also be in summer break right now. I think the last race was uh, 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 what's it called? It's like Belgium, the Belgian GP. People want to look it up. Spa. The weekend of the fifth, down in the south of England, just outside of Salisbury, all the hotels were full. Spa. <laughs> so Spa, we're we're flying into London. We're in the air. We're just like, what are we going to do in this town? We don't have any plans. It's all kind of a mess. I'm going to be honest. We, we might be a little bit stressed or, you know, <laughs> and I get this random idea that I'm like, what if we make London our base of operations? What if this is just our base camp and poor Nate? Yeah. Pardon me? That was my idea. Was that your idea? No, no, no. If it was, please. Yeah. No, because it was my idea because I had my 21. Yeah, and that, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, if I have to, like, lug it down there, like, the next day back to London for one night and then from London to Edinburgh, so I was like, can we set an idea? And I'm, I'm glad that y'all. Well, I'm glad like you it. had that idea there. Oh, my God. I can't. Yeah, me, Miss Telly. I can't believe I tried to take credit for you. I'm so sorry. Oh, that's fine. That's fine. Joe, Joe's yelling at me now. Be like, how dare you take his credit? <laughs> Which is which is fair, yeah. It's, and uh, so it's not that important to me. Don't worry. <laughs> so we're like in London. No, what's it? Credit where credit do, please. It's so yeah, we're <laughs> like literally in the London Heathrow uh, customs lineup, and Olivia's looking up hotels to stay in. That was so good. <laughs> yeah, it's uh, our flight had been delayed. Was, it was like nine o'clock at night or something like that. Was that the one where we kept like pushing it off, or or which one? Which was the one that uh, where the day before we were like, oh, we need to look at hotels, and then that was like, the one. Yeah, 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 yeah. We're in Lautenbrunnen. Like, should we book something? We're, we're like, no. And breakfast and a breakfast. We're like, ah, oh, let's do it on the train. And yeah, we're on the like, train oh. to Zurich. We're like, no, not now. We'll do it later. And then, yeah, yeah. I think that was the one. <laughs> and yeah, we pushed it off uh, a hilarious amount of time until. <laughs> It uh, it had to be done by our Lord and Savior Olivia. Honestly, uh, customs line. What an what an I incredible. Think she had confirmed what I was waiting for my baggage to baggage. <laughs> yeah, and so um, we get this really cute place, and apparently, according to Londoners, like what we were doing was basically crazy, because our plan was we'd stay in London and we'd take like a two hour train out of town just as a one way commute, and we did that basically every day. So one day we did two hours down to Salisbury. Uh, the next day, <laughs> I think this is the weird part. You did a day trip to Edinburgh. 
I mean, it was 24 hours. We went to Edinburgh on the 5th and returned on the 6th. Do they not commute there? No. Yeah, just went there for the night and came back. Yeah. <laughs> and then the day they were out of town, I did a day trip down to Winchester and back. Yeah, the Londoners and Chatter. <laughs> oh, how long was that actually to Winchester? The Winchester, it was, it was actually super fast. It was only like 70 minutes or something like that. Oh, that's fine. Yeah, I did basically the exact same trip that we did. So uh, I might do some photos now, if that's cool. So I'm going to start Thanks. with, I'm going to start with uh, us saying, oops, wait, no, no, no. Let me get you in here. Uh, boop, 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 boop. There you are. Hello. <laughs> Bye. Yeah, so this was, uh, this was Nadine saying goodbye to Switzerland and hello to England. And then the first meal we had in London, the traditional English fare, butter chicken and tiki masala. Chicken tikka. Chicken tikka. Oh, oh my God. So yeah, I'll be honest, uh, it, it, the, the Swiss food that we had, uh, the, the first Swiss food we had was good. And then we went up into the mountains where it's very touristy and you basically have no other choice than to like eat what's around there, which uh, ended up being not what I would have loved to show you. Like considering Swiss food. I mean, we got to have we got to have basic. raclette and fondue. Hold on, I have to go back to the Swiss food here so people can see it as well. I could have, I could have, like both of those meals would have been better if we just done them at home. I do love that. That's like the classic host thing of like, yeah, it was fine, but I could do better. So we had there's like the chocolate fondue. Look at this video of raclette though. That's really adorable. I mean, it's not really raclette, it's chocolate fondue. <laughs> well, sorry, no, the fondue, but there's a video of raclette now. Oh, you've, sorry. I, you've I, got I, a little I, bit of stream delay. I apologize. Delay. Sorry. All right, uh, disregard everything Incredible. I say. <laughs> Thank you. Ah, uh, uh, yes. That's got to that's gotta count for something, right? Jeez. And then... Oh, I have to show you. Like, there's so many. Just uh, which good... mountains did we go to? Uh, we were staying uh, near uh, the Jungfrau Joch, which is near Algermünchen Jungfrau. So it's uh, near Interlaken in the Bernese Alps. Look at these! Look at these photos. <laughs> <laughs> Our uh, magic playing photo attempt in this. In the oh my god! Oh, I, it's so beautiful. I loved it. And then where's the where's the fondue photo? The fondola. Yeah. Oh my God! Don't don't tease me about the fondola. <laughs> Good old fondola. So we had like Olivia, Olivia and I had two goals of food that we wanted to eat while in Switzerland, which was raclette and fondue, and we we nailed it. Was it the best? I don't know. It was pretty I'm dang so good. Y'all got your cheese meals. I don't know. I don't actually think uh, Olivia and I talked about the Fond du Lac. Okay, we're going to talk about England, but we're now back in Switzerland or whatever. So, <laughs> Sorry, I'm not ready. No, 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 no. So the biggest there. disappointment of the entire trip, which is saying something, is we were up in Wengen. How'd I do? Wengen is good. Yeah. Oh, I nailed it with the, the pronunciation. And we were trying, and we tried Googling what is the best fondue in this city. And the thing that came up was the fondue gondola. The fondola. Which we portmanteaued into the fondola. <laughs> and it, we gave them a phone call, and they're like, oh, we're sorry. It's only for two. What a disappointment. What do you mean so, you can't squeeze uh, a third person? Back when we somehow thought it, w it was an actual gondola, like a, like a ropeway traveling in the air, it kind of made sense to like not have weird balancing in there, but... As as time went on, we realized that that would have not made much sense because that trip would not be very long. And then we also saw pictures and found out that the fondola was actually very stationary on the floor, uh, and 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 very so, overpriced for right here the fondue was. gondola. Yeah. So you like look at this? It looks absolutely it beautiful. Though. Comes with wine. It was like what it was like a hundred and sixty Swiss francs for this. Or two people, yeah. Yeah, and we're like, why can't it be three? And then, yeah, it's not even a real gondola. It's just a decorative yeah, gondola. It, it's just a thing on the, on the, on the ground. <laughs> more like fondola, but like faux. Fa yeah, what's even more misleading is that the the hotel that is organizing this is, is directly opposite 
uh to to the like the actual ropeway that like operates in in this town so, so yeah there's a cable car here was... and the fondula restaurant is like right there right yeah. fondue gondola there's the ropeway so of, of course yeah. you assume oh my god you book a ticket at the fondue gondola and then you go up to the top of the mountain right you're like you get to go all the way up there nope like in hindsight, it kind of makes sense that it that it's not like a functional like ropeway thing because again the trip would not be long enough to have like an actual dinner and like it would be all shaky and weird. But uh, yeah, it was still like if you look at the price and then the situation is like, oh yeah, it's, it's gotta be a thing. <laughs> so yeah, our fan our fondue ended up at the second place, pasta and more that traditional fondue <laughs> place. <laughs> <laughs> So there we are at at pasta and more after that. All right, somebody did the math. 160 Swiss francs is 244 Canadian or 180 USD <laughs> or 166 euros. Yeah, felt felt bad. Felt very bad. I see. I'm glad we uh, we averted that that one because I I'm pretty sure it would not have been like great. It had been a little bit disappointing. Probably. All right. What else, what other Swiss memories are you excited about? I'm okay. Let's let, let's go back to our our wonderful we can, chaotic sorry, we, energy. We can we can we can go to England. I'm sorry. You want to you want to go to England now? We don't have to. But you already covered Switzerland. It's fine. Yeah, but you didn't. It's fine. I wasn't here. That's fair. No, obviously every. Uh, I think what what I enjoyed most about Switzerland was that you guys were so like excited and just like happy with uh everything we did there i think because uh, I, I obviously i don't spend every day in that region because i i don't live in that region i live a little bit somewhere else so it's still a little bit special to me but uh it's just like the general vibe is something that i that i can like kind of find easily let's call it that but it was just it was just so beautiful to like see you guys so happy with what we saw and where we were going. So I was like, that was the best thing for me, really. <laughs> I think what I'm supposed to do as so she's saying fun. that is like flash the photos of our smiling faces and. <laughs> Yay. No, that was so That's cool. such a good photo. Oh my God. <laughs> I got some of Olivia's photos up in here too. Yeah. Uh, our, our hair was still uh, extremely wet from, from the, the waterfall. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Oh yeah. I mean, we got, we got some we got some waterfall showers in in the cave. Was, probably the single yeah. most special day of this entire trip was this day where you took us mm. to the top of a glacier and then spelunking through caves yeah. to visit the most beautiful waterfalls ever. Like that was so cool. <laughs> I I wish the weather was a bit better in the morning on the top of the mountain, but it was still really really pretty. I yeah, that was. <laughs> that was I, so I have learned. Shower. I have learned while traveling with Nadine. That the Swiss apologize more than Canadians do, which I can't believe. I have, at the start of the trip, I, I told you that Swiss people were basically like Canadians when it comes. This to is that. the weather that she was apologizing for, by the way. No, 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 that was that, that was the pretty part. I I was <laughs> a little bit upset about morning weather. No, that this is completely fine. This is beautiful. But uh, in, in the morning when we were on top of the tall mountain, or like yeah, one one of the mountain tops was constantly. In, yeah, there you go. I mean, you're just showing the good ones. <laughs> I don't have a lot of the photos oh, of uh, of the hair whipping. That's a lot of Olivia's phone. <laughs> like, look there's, at this. Uh, there's like three um, very tall peaks that are just like if if you're standing there and all the peaks are visible, it's just kind of very like a like a, a humbling um, sight because you're you're so high up and there's still like these three like gigantic peaks right around you. Uh, which is kind of cool, but one of the peaks was like always uh, under the clouds. The other two were uh, mostly visible, I think. But it was still, it was still gorgeous. Don't get me wrong. Yeah. But uh, yeah, I just wish. So yeah, this is one like the other peak there. Observation stuff, just, just absolutely stunning up here. <laughs> yeah, I, I just like that the they just like built a train station on top of this mountain. So people that maybe can't really like go hiking uh by themselves or like because usually um 
these kind of terra uh, terrains, if you go hiking, uh, are kind of hard to reach if if you're not super fit or if you've got some other form of disability. So I kind of like that uh, this experience exists that people can go up there and kind of like experience it up there without having to like actually hike up there. Yeah, Olivia has all the photos of like the train station and transfers. The only photo I have from the train is this one happy mountain cow. <laughs> Moo moo. Happy mountain cows. Happy mountain Yay. cow indeed. <laughs> All right, England. <laughs> yes, sorry. <laughs> no, 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 no. It's fine. <laughs> so uh, we wake up in London and after Barcelona and especially after Switzerland, we've discovered that, God, the London train station is a mess. Like, yeah. what a just what an absolute nightmare. And so I think I was suffering especially because y'all don't have a train station or, or like don't really have a train system to begin with. So we were like, oh, deal with it, I guess. And I'm just like used to functioning Swiss train system that is like easy. Like an to use app that tells you what to do something. Down. So um, he here's here's our for the people, the English people in chat. I'll explain the route. Uh, we were at King's Cross Station and we booked through the train line app. Tickets that went from King's Cross Station down to Salisbury. And the only information it said was, here is one one-way ticket pass for London. And then here is a train ticket to Basenstock. Basenstock? Basen? Ba Basen? I don't know how to pronounce it. I mean, I mean, the only info that the train line app provided us with was really that uh, we, that we, uh, that we had one point where we needed to change trains and i don't remember where it was but uh it said that we would arrive at 9 20 and also leave at 9 20. yeah yeah so Why? here's london uh through epson i think it was down this way somewhere epson no or salisbury oh god what have i done yeah, I don't remember where we ended up changing trains, but it was not where the app indicated. It was also not what the tickets indicated. Was oh, yeah. We just one person. We uh, we were like the classic uh, uh, like tourists. We just like ask everyone. It's like, we're dumb tourists. Please help us not get lost. We're so sorry. And then uh, they told us where to change trains. And it was not like... The the place we changed trains at was nowhere indicated nowhere neither oh, yeah. on tickets nor on app. <laughs> so works. some other wild stuff that happens on these trains. One, you'll be on a train that's like ten cars long, and then five and five will just split. And if you don't know which car you're on, your train might just go to the wrong city, oh, yeah. which is weird. And the second thing that happened is sometimes the stations aren't the right size for the size of train you're on. So if it's like you must be on the front seven cots because the next station is too small if you want to dis disembark yeah. here. And you're like, what? I forgot about that. <laughs> like that, that doesn't make sense either. It was just a lot of chaos happening. It was like, I don't know. It was, uh, everything ended up working. So it, it was mostly just entertaining. But it was just like, why? Yeah. yeah. So uh, let me just find out where Salisbury is. Where where is Salisbury? Wait, oh my God, it's way over oh, here. West. Oh wow, to the, to the west of London. Yeah. Oh, I thought we went south. We went this way. Neat. No, it's mostly west. Right, 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 right. Okay, so we had uh, Graham and Kathleen were in this area ish sort of thing. So we took a train. Yeah, and there's the Bay. <clears throat> Chat was trying to help me with the pronunciation here. Southampton. Basingstoke. Basingstoke. Yeah. So. Oh, you were. I, was, way. I got stream delay again. I'm sorry. Sorry. <laughs> yeah. So uh, we did that and we figured it out. And I was very proud of us. And we had train snacks. We always had train snacks. One of the things <laughs> that I loved about traveling with the girls, they'd be like, oh, we're 20 minutes before. Time to raid the supermarket. Let's get pops. Let's get train snacks. Let's get snacks in your journey, man. Cheese or four kilos of chocolate or whatever. Not even lie. Yeah. <laughs> Honestly, if if uh, if you were allowed to import cheese into America, I would have also just taken uh, Olivia to all the cheese stores. 
Mm. But I think I'm pretty sure that you're not allowed to like bring straight up like uh dairy like, dairy. I think there's uh, yeah, milk, I... milk products. I know that the chocolate also contains milk, but it's like less it's more processed than the milk is and I think they they don't want like fresh milk products basically. I don't know. That kind of makes Weird. sense, I guess. I don't know. I, I just know that the customs are sometimes weird about like cheese and meat. Sure. Uh, so when we got down there, we ended up being, I think we, we, our timing didn't quite work out with Graham and Kathleen. So we had about 30 minutes to kill. So we found the super cute cafe and took this very cute photo of the girls. Uh, yeah, and that cafe was super cute it was it was like this giant old manor it just kind of kept going forever yeah, they had like every section of the wall so they had like wallpapers on their walls and every section had like a different wallpaper which usually if you hear about it it sounds very chaotic but it ended up looking so cute in there yeah every room had wow. character and they're like these old leather bound yeah. sofas and all kinds of stuff and then so down in salisbury we picked up the like the ultimate tourism pass and it was salisbury cathedral Stonehenge, I want to say Salem, but that's wrong. Old Salem, maybe? Oh, and it also included getting to see the Magna US, Carta. No? Does that sound right? Uh, the last spot we didn't go to because we didn't have time. But uh, Yeah, yeah, yeah. You mentioned Salem. Is there a Salem in the UK? Because I, I thought Salem was in, in the... Sarum, Sarum, something like that? Yeah. yeah. And honestly... um. We were mostly excited about Friendship and Stonehenge, but the Salisbury Cathedral ended up being really cool. Like, really, really mm -hmm. cool. And so, yeah, here's some photos of that. <laughs> oh, I this is very minor, and I took a photo of this because it bugs me so much. Why isn't this arch centered with anything? Because they built stuff around it. But, like... The road isn't centered through the middle of it. The way buildings intersect isn't centered. Everything about this is I off. Mean, the, I, feel, I feel like the road is a real like perpetrator here because uh, the road looks like it was similar old to like Arch, which is weird. Uh, but like buildings around it is basi basically people just for 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 a good amount of time in Europe, especially where we have some very old buildings, and then uh, at some point, I think for a time, people just didn't value them as much and just kind of whatever built around it so that's probably how that ended up it's just and like such a cool on, feature and... started valuing these uh old buildings again and we we're like oh shit we actually need to protect them and stuff i feel like that's what happened because at some point we we're like ah whatever <laughs> sure <laughs> nobody cares so yeah bam cathedral and we were a little bit tight for time because we were doing day trips. So we're like, okay, we have to catch the, we have to catch basically like the 4.30 train, 4.30, 5.30, something like that, back to London. And as such, we're like, okay, how long could we possibly spend at this cathedral? And I think we blinked and like two hours just disappeared. Like this place was yeah. absolutely stunning. I mean, we, we kind of also blinked on our train ticket because we could have just taken a later one. I'm not sure anymore why we rushed. Did we have, have plans that evening or? Well, we were meeting up with, uh, with Duncan. Was that then? Okay. Yeah. That was the night. Yeah. Because you were leaving to Edinburgh the next day. We yeah. needed to meet up with Duncan yeah. and hand off bags. Yeah. So we didn't like have to have to rush, but yeah, <laughs> but fair. We, we ended up rushing. But yeah, compared to the Sargata Familia that we talked about before, this is like a very, very classic cathedral. Look how symmetrical it is. Yeah, that one. I've uh, me being from Europe, I've I've been to a lot of uh, cathedrals and uh, like old buildings before. Basically, I don't know if if you just go to Venice once, you probably see <laughs> you're basically done. Cathedrals. Um, but that one still felt very special and, and I saw, uh, elements in there that I've, I've never seen in other cathedrals. It was also just large. Mm. This, um, this was super duper cool right in the center here. Uh, this was for baptism, like some type of water feature, but it was mm -hmm. completely still and gave you these stunning reflections of the roof and mm -hmm. the windows. So I'm like, I'm trying to take photos to show like just how cool this is. 
but the the other reflection no this one this one's also pretty cool yeah but i i felt the i think you have pictures of the other reflection yeah this one was yeah going stunning. down the way yeah it it made the room so much larger because it captured all of the ceiling and then it's like kind of kind of duplicated it so it ended up being looking gigantic the gravestones under the feet are amazing it kind of it kind of stressed me out so these large stones these are epitaphs written like you're walking on top of to yeah, tombs people. like what's the i don't know what the right word is for that which was like kind of intense to be honest and unlike the Sagrada Familia, this church is in active use in the like in the community and the day to day, all kinds of wild stuff. Like there's local art on the sides, all along the walls. There's um, tributes to like military regiments and stuff like that. Yeah, there are actually people buried there. Like there's just tombs everywhere. Like on the side here, that's a tomb. That's like a real person's tomb. Like stuff everywhere. Mm -hmm. It's kind of wild. Yeah, and in in these older churches, it was uh, very normal to have like actual people people buried uh, in the ground, as you see here. in in some churches, I, I don't think in, I don't think I've seen it in that one, but I've seen it in others where people are basically buried in in the walls too, where they have like uh, huge tombs uh, protruding out of the walls, and, like uh, or have like huge boards or like uh, plates on the wall with names and stuff on them, but also like whole statues that are like protruding out of the walls which is very intense for sure <laughs> um so a couple of interesting facts one the first stone for this cathedral was laid in 1200 mm. which is wild uh two apparently it survived bombing in world war ii uh because german pirates pirates pilots were very specifically told to not hit the cathedral so that it could be a landmark for finding other things. So like, leave mm -hmm. the cathedral, let's find other stuff. And that's uh, what kind of both sides of the war did, because, for example, the dome in Cologne, um, basically the same story where, uh, the, like, the enemies, uh, or, like, the opposite sides uh, purposely avoided these large landmarks. So, uh, yeah, as you said, so they could ident identify where they were going, because back then airplanes were very rudimentary and they had like no real way of knowing where they were exactly sure they needed kind of like, like yeah no gps QQ. right yeah they just kind of had to like kind of go by go by what they could see out of a very shitty airplane mm -hmm. um this is kind of funny one of the our favorite parts was actually this courtyard here <laughs> Oh my god, the courtyard! So yeah, and we have a, a series of increasing selfies. So there's this beautiful cathedral, but then there's just this courtyard with trees, and then we couldn't take photos afterwards. But uh, mm -hmm. just opposite us was the Magna Carta. And we had to walk into this... Oh, god. Sorry, looking at a photo of the two of you suddenly. I don't know how bad your stream delay oh. is. I miss friends. <laughs> oh, oh no, the photos. Oh God. Yeah. Oh my God. I haven't before this event. I haven't seen Olivia for for three years, and that is entirely too long. So, so yes, we had a lot of very cheesy pictures. I mean, I suppose before I mean, we'll interrupt the flow of the story to talk about that too. So before we went and did this trip together, I think we had spent maybe a total of three days together. Yeah. Ever. <laughs> That about sums it up, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I mean, With I don't know. Sharing a very, very good meal of uh, poutine, of course. Oh my God, do I have that photo? Hold on, I think I do, because this is Google Photos. Uh, please poutine hold. Poutine picture. Uh, what year were your PPR guest? Was it 2018? Yeah, I, th I think it was December 19, just before uh, time traveling hit. <laughs> Look, these... The past three years did not really like happen. No, no, I mean you're not you're not wrong. It's just travel. funny to call it time travel. I uh, keep calling it that because that's what it feels like. Can I share I that? Really happen, but like, of course. That that poutine photo once I find it. So yeah, I think this was the previous time, and we'd like run into each other conventions and stuff like that. But December twenty nineteen. 
December 10th. Oh, January 11th, 2020. Wow, really? Oh, it was in January. I thought it was in December 19. Wild, okay. I yeah, so cool. there's... I guess, I guess you're on the PPR with Ailey, huh? Yeah, I was uh, with Ailey and Krim. And then, there you go. This is about when oh God, Nadine and I met. There she is about to go uh, full gremlin mode on a poutine. <laughs> it was so good. Look, I get excited. Right and now. then we have uh, the the face of victory. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. There's Krim's shoulder. You can't, you can recognize that anywhere. <laughs> oh, yeah. I, actually, yeah. That is very trademark Krim. <laughs> it's really funny. Oh, oh, you have more pictures, I lead. I mean, I, I do, but like, I haven't. Ne picture. I haven't necessarily shared all of these photos online before, so so I'm trying not but to. But it's put nice that you still have them. <laughs> I didn't realize. So, I kept getting angry emails from Google, being like, "Your your drive is full." I'm like, "How?" And then I realized all of my photos have been backing up onto it. Google Drive does it to me too, and I've I've been I've had the exact same revelation where at some point I'm like, oh. Well, it's perfect yeah, for okay. it's perfect for right now because then I get to do this, right? Yeah. <laughs> Anyways, uh, Stonehenge. <laughs> <laughs> Stonehenge. <laughs> Look at this. I don't know. The English are very funny because it feels like they don't think Stonehenge is very cool. I don't know why. And then yeah, we basically every English person we talked to was like, yeah, whatever. Right? Yeah, Vince was like, ah, I used to be able to climb on them and now you can't. <laughs> <laughs> sure. But yeah, it was it was now actually you know. really now neat. You know. Now you know why all those stones are littered all over yeah. the floor. So it's we we did like a 30 minute hike through the fields and like learned about the history of everything like that and did a walk around. It was pretty cool. It was cool, especially because uh, so you get dropped off by a bus at like a tourist center and then you can either walk to the side or take another bus to the side if you're lazy. Um, so we walked over a field that had like a path made into the field. And at some point we bypassed like like a forested part that was like fenced out, but there were like little doors that you could go through the fence. And because it looked so cute, we just like tried to open the door. It was completely open. So we we're like, oh, let's take the cute but also slightly creepy forest path. Yep. Which we did. And in that little forest path, we just like uh happened upon a little glade with, with like a race little hill and on that hill it was i'm i'm 100 percent sure we witnessed a little witch gathering because there was like all the women just gathered in a there was like 20 <laughs> people on the top of a hill in the woods next to yeah. stonehenge wearing red robes and we're yeah. like oh my god red cape. Was, i forgot was, about that we were just like, all right we we uh we said we find a witch gathering. We're just gonna keep going, not disturb them. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. We're just like we're just like shh. Okay, it's fine. Yeah. Yeah, we're like we like started whispering. We're like okay, I think quiet. Let's be really yeah, respectful. Yeah, it was red. <laughs> it was really funny. We just like popped out of the wood, and then we're just like oh, look at this. <laughs> this is yeah. happening. <laughs> yeah, just a casual little witch's coven, you know, as one does. It was kind of red, yeah. Uh, they were, I. They were they're having a time. They're having a time of their lives there. And then let's not forget a uh, very important photo shoot that happened up there. So Nadine, because she cards. had all of her stuff, she had all these magic decks. And we're like, all right, I guess we're at Stonehenge. Why not? <laughs> Look, we can just be there and not take a little picture. <laughs> So the best part of this is because it looks like it's this like very chill, quiet moment and we're nearby. And actually, there's like hundreds of people on both sides, and I'm yeah. body blocking them, leaning back <laughs> so I can take all these pictures <laughs> and try and make it look like it's not like what it is, I mean, right? The picture, the pictures are not so nice too, because like the area where they fence off people around the Stonehenge is actually quite large. Yeah. So if you take a picture like beside it, you can completely block out any other people, which is kind of great. <laughs> Oh, did anyone cast a great hench? Oh, no. We should have done that. 
that would have been very funny. Yeah. Oh, then there's my uh, there's my trip down to Winchester after this. Yeah, so this is great. So we we got. Pardon me, Joe. Oh, Joe wants to see the dog photo. I'm sorry. Oh my god, that little sheep. And then I got to feed it a snack, and so there it is eating a snack out of my hand. Oh my god, that sheep was cute. Sad I missed that one, but it's good that he took pictures. Oh my god. Yeah. So when we got back, oh my god, so we got to meet, um, let's see if I, I found a photo. So this is one of my best friends in the entire world. Uh, his name is Duncan. You can see he's very startled and enjoying this photo of us together. Uh, and Duncan's very much not used to the, oh, I'm going to take pictures of all the everything. Time. Yeah. So. so Duncan is great because he is not online and like not a magic player and so like the three of us were just this very weird chaotic energy compared to sort of his normal vibe <laughs> and so we got back up there for dinner and we're just like okay the girls are going to edinburgh it doesn't make sense for me to have a hotel room by myself because everything's super expensive so we met up with him we grabbed basically like all of our bags we did like this panic pack and then sent him in a car with all of our luggage. And he just took everything. He was just like such an absolute so nice. hero. Yeah, that was super nice. I mean, I was especially happy because of my silly... 22 kilo cosplay sarcophagus. Yeah. That was extremely nice. So happy he did that. So that day while you were gone, yeah, I went down to Winchester. I got to meet Uno, who's like a community, like long-term friend and one of actually my channel moderators, Nadine. Oh, that's so cool. Yeah. And we had a very know. English day down there. Um, I didn't know. Do you want to share any insights on Edinburgh or you just went full gremlin mode or? <laughs> oh, yes. Uh, it was it was a very chaotic 24 hours. It was incredible because like uh, Paula Libby and I very much shame like just chaotic gremlin energy so from from the second one when we arrived it was just like uh, uh us being like incredibly happy and weird and probably uh the the whole city of edinburgh and the the witch uh bar scene there is forever changed because uh <laughs> so i need you to back up a the witch changed. bar scene so you went to like yeah, a we found a witch bar can you please elaborate <laughs> So it was, it was like a little, it was like a little cellar bar. So you took a couple of steps down and then they had a couple of rooms. It was very adorably like decorated, like in, in like a, um, it almost looked like, uh, the inside of, of like an old ship, like with like a wooden, uh, the, the walls were wood and there was some wooden posts in the middle and stuff like that, wooden tables and everything. And they had like. If the, the music was the best, honestly. It was it was so funny when we noticed that they were playing like um like modern hits that were played on the mandolin and everything in the background. So there was Britney Spears and mandolin version and everything. <laughs> it was just great. And you could order drinks. We ordered like a, a drink to share, which arrived in like a, just like a huge cauldron uh, with like straws to drink out of, and the shots were like uh, just like neon green with uh, dry ice in them, so they bubbled and everything. It was it was incredibly cute and they they gave everyone like little witch cloaks to wear <laughs> like cowls because i saw some photos and i was like why yeah. are you wearing hoods yeah they it was like a cloak so you could wear it with it had sleeves and everything but we kind of made capes out of it with, like hoods and everything it was wild first we were like do you do you want to um would you be okay with wearing this and we were like we have two cosplayers here it's gonna be fine Oh my god. Probably the only yeah. moment you're like, I wish I had my suitcase. I could one-up you. <laughs> Probably. No, it was, it was so cute. Like, it was funny because the general uh, vibe in there was uh, p uh, pretty nerdy, like kind of on a down low, more chill. And we were just like very energetic and loud. Yeah. It was, it was uh, if you ever meet the three of us in, in, in one place. Uh, watch out i guess patient no i was just like uh, it's just fun because we all like make stupid animal noises and like laugh about it and it was just the best honestly <laughs> i can't describe it it was it was fun and weird 
We're, we're little chaos gremlins. So while they were having their witch coven drink party, <laughs> I got to I got to hang out with my best friend, which I was very excited about. And then we did the start of a London coffee tour. And I'll skip through this because obviously uh, Nadine wasn't there. So but yeah, I got you to go to... You can, you can elaborate. That's fine. You got to tell people about your coffee tour, man. All right, that's fair. All right, so for starters, uh, Joe, check this out. Joe made an espresso map of London or a cafe, a cafe map of London to check out. So these are all the places worth visiting. And so we were down in Peckham. So the first two we went to were um, Old Spike and Nula, Nuha? Nola. And look at this dog. A long pupper. Yeah. He just walked right in and said hello to us. Which was kind of spectacular. I do um I do like a, a monthly coffee write up for my Patreon. It's called the Bruise Letter. And so I took as many photos as I could so we could do like a proper write up on all this stuff as well. Yeah. And then basically just got to do a walking tour. So we started down in that area. And then walked from here to here to these other two cafes. I actually don't know what this distance is. Oh, yeah, we got to go up the, uh, I think we went up this hill. Anyways, there's like a big hill in the south of London that gave us this beautiful view of downtown, which is kind of incredible. You okay. Yeah, so we walked, checked out these two, did like a 30-minute walk, checked out these two, and walked back. And my buddy, my buddy lives somewhere in this neighborhood, so it was actually kind of perfect. Oh my God, there's an Isle of Dogs. Can you see it? Wait, in the area that we were looking? No, no, it's a, uh, uh, there's like this little loop that the river does, and Randy Miller says, I love dogs. Oh my god! Right under Canary Wharf. Why didn't we I go there? Dog. I don't know if this is the first time I'm seeing it right now. Man, we missed out. Turns out there might be, in a city of 9 million people, there might be some cool stuff That's to do. so funny. Yeah. Oh, man. So... Uh, oh t very, very, very TLDR. Best cafe that we went to uh, that day was Good as Gold. And I actually, I actually told uh, their staff, I think this is the owner, about the us becoming infamous <laughs> in Switzerland. In Switzerland, yeah. <laughs> so what something did they that was. Say to that? Pardon, go ahead. What the, What did they say? The they just story? laughed. Oh. Oh. So the cafes you went to will be in the next brews letter. I asked because I'm going to London in about a month and I was going to ask for coffee suggestions. I mean, I think I just have to share the Google map that Joe made so everyone can see it. Yeah, we'll, we'll try and make a version of that. Joe says we can share it. So something that was very interesting about cafes in London in particular is it felt like all of them were also restaurants. It was very, very rare for them to just be a cafe. Like this place had table service and food, uh, unless it was just like a little hole in the wall espresso bar like this one. Like if you walked in, um, there was, there's two things I've learned about London. And I don't know if this is true of the English in total, but it was very odd to me. One, they love lineups. They love queuing. It's like the national pastime. <laughs> it's just get in line somewhere and wait. And everyone's like, oh, very good. They're very happy. And two, which is actually contrary to queuing, is you have to call ahead to all the restaurants if you want to have a seat. You can't just show up. You need a reservation, which is very odd to me. Yeah, I don't like that. Because, <laughs> like, we're very much a just kind of show up and do our thing sort of thing, right? Oh. By the way, uh, Williard in chat is saying that Isle of Dogs and Canary Wharf are uh, where all the bank HQs are, so probably not a good... Uh... Oh, not actual dogs. <laughs> Why why is why is something called I Love Dogs Bank HQ territory? That's so sad. Yeah. You know, yeah, hold on. Wait a second. <laughs> Look at what you've done oh, to well, Nadine, London. Me to go there. Yeah. You have made Nadine disappointed. You've made a powerful <laughs> enemy. I almost got to bait it. Thank you for the warning. It's a one disappointment oh, spirit. All right, so I suppose the final last milestone that we should talk about is Dishoom. Oh, Dishoom. That's a good face. That's a good 
So much like in Barcelona, as soon as you find out that you're there, everyone's like, you have to go to Sagrada Familia. As soon as our friends found out that we're in Dishoom, pardon me, we're in London, everyone's like, you have to go to Dishoom. It's yeah. like the best restaurant. Make it work. Like messages, blah, 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 blah. And our final day in London, our final dinner, we were, we were hangry. <laughs> Um, I don't sure. I don't think we were straight up angry. I think we were just frustrated about not having a plan. <laughs> That's fair. <laughs> really, because we were like in in a weird area that didn't have a ton of food options. So we were kind of wander uh, wandering, and like the the one or two we found that looked good, we're just like for some reason at like seven p.m. or like six thirty seven p.m. It's just like oh, we're kitchen is closed. It was closed a Sunday. Today. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're open till sorry, we're open till eight, but at seven p.m. our kitchen closes, and we're like, Burn. <laughs> yeah, Not like business. Okay. So we're trying so to find out a place to eat. Home. We're trying to coordinate with my buddy Duncan and his partner Rebecca, and I finally just call him up, and he's like, "Oh, have you heard of Dishoom?" And we're like, "Yeah." He's like, well, I'm, I'm right there, and they have availability. You want to check it out? And I, <laughs> just so fast. Olivia was just like, you tell me where he is right now. And we, like, ran to the train Don't and, like, worry. trained across the city so we could get there. And uh, this is the other weird, like, queue thing. So there was, God, like, a queue, a queue long enough that uh, they regularly walk yeah. down the lineup and hand out, like... Bourbon and complimentary chai. And the line was like around the building. Or like not around a full building, but just like around the around the edge of the building. I don't know. And and luckily Luckily it took us long enough to train to get there that by the time we got there, Duncan and his partner had basically reached the front of the line, so we got to go just straight in. <clears throat> we cheated. <laughs> a little. A little. We also arrived like one minute before the next uh, 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 PD, uh, PD distribution of drinks. Oh, yeah. yeah. We, got, we got free chai. <laughs> great. <laughs> we arrived at the exact perfect moment. It was great. I think I've actually got um, photos of that from Olivia's Twitter. Ooh. Yeah, we, we missed the bourbon, but we got there for the chai. Which yeah, I'm Dun the Duncan chai. enjoyed the bourbon. Very good. Yeah. Yeah, there you go. Here is an extremely handsome photo of us. <laughs> Looking at see it. Hang on. Hang on. Oh yes. There's Such there's three picture. with different focus. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> it's uh it's the most beautiful picture I've ever seen. <laughs> so apparently Joe likes this photo so much she saved it and put it on her phone. Oh no, I'm sorry. That was our weird faces. <laughs> Whatever. Uh, my favorite part. Picture. My favorite part about this restaurant. <clears throat> I mean, a it's enormous. It's it's shocking how many people are in there and what they're doing. Yeah. But we we sit down. We're a little bit hungry. There's five of us. We're trying to figure out what we want to order. And I write everything down. And our <laughs> server is this like. 60 year old Spanish guy who lived in America for like 20 years and he is just a character. He's, that guy was yeah, he was great. <laughs> so so picture picture yourself with your friends at like a meet like an upscale dining establishment and we give the whole order and he's just like, Can I speak honestly? And we're like, sure. And he's yeah. like, no, 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 I want to check in. We're like, sure. He's like, your dinner order is really boring. I'm like, what? <laughs> Just like, I'm sorry, what? And he's like, look at this. Everything is off the grill. You don't have any curries. You got like... It's almost those sauces. Yeah. They're like, like, what is this thing? Like, I want you to have a good experience. And this doesn't look like a good order. And we're like... We got dumb tours checked so hard. It was the, the, the most funny thing that has happened on a trip. All yeah, time. yeah. It was so funny. Yeah, and he's like, you ordered two of this dish? No, that's bad. And I'm, I'm not trying to emulate, like... You also need to picture this like sixty-year-old Spanish accent. It's like you ordered no curry. I, I can't do it. Like this, and this, 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 like, I'm just gonna say your order is very boring. There's just kind of like this. It was uh, 
Honestly, it did remind me of Barcelona because in Barcelona, every restaurant I went to, A, mm -hmm. they, they were so good with the upsell and B, they were always just a little bit sarcastic with how they, with the yeah. banter that they had with you. Yeah. And maybe yeah. that's just what he had there. But yeah, he's just like, these two grilled chicken dishes, this is really boring. Here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to cross this one out. I recommend this curry. We're like, okay. And he's like, yeah. And just everything over and over and over. You don't have enough appetizers. Yeah. You don't have the drinks don't go well with it. And yeah, we ended up with 15 different things to try. Yeah. I think what we also didn't realize is that uh, all the like the chicken tikas we ordered and stuff were just meats from the grill without sauce. I think we, none of us really realized that when we ordered, uh, which is where most of our conundrum stemmed from, I feel like. Uh, but yeah. He helped us order like an incredibly well balanced like table of food that we enjoyed. Oh my god, it like, was a feast! It was so absolutely much. incredible. Yeah, what a what a absolute legend! And and I, and I think as they served the food, he again came by and was like, oh, "I ordered, uh, I changed your order a little bit, so here's that instead of." <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like I don't know, like in under any other circumstance. Anything he did could have been so offensive and weird, but just like the way he did it was incredibly charming and helpful and we enjoyed it. I, I kind of agree with you, right? Like that's got to be such a tricky line to navigate of like, how do you, how do you tell somebody at a restaurant their order is bad and then fix it for mm -hmm. them elegantly? And mm -hmm. they did. <laughs> so props to them. The single most expensive meal we had on the whole trip. It was great. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> it was, uh, it was. Not much more expensive for five people, though, than some of the meals we've had in Switzerland. That's fair. <laughs> so I feel like we, we did okay. Did okay. And then there was probably the most difficult part of the entire trip. Mm. That was saying goodbye. Yes. Look Which got the... delayed again and again. Oh, my God. <laughs> Thanks, Air Canada, for, for letting us have Surge for a couple more hours. It was great. Thank you so much. It wasn't good for him, but it was good for us. Yeah, the, the flights were originally, I was leaving at 2, <laughs> Olivia was leaving at 4, and then Nadine was leaving at 5. No, 4.30. 4.30. And then mm -hmm. our flights got so delayed that Nadine left first, <laughs> <laughs> Olivia left second. <laughs> and then I think Nadine literally landed in Germany before my flight took off. Yeah, so I think when when I was sitting in my airplane, I was like, "Ah, oh, we're starting taxiing soon." I think you said, "Oh, we're starting to board." And when I landed, you were like, "I'm about, I'm, I, I'm still there, man." <laughs> yeah, we're, we're about to take off. We're like, we're still here. It honked. If I may very quickly, Uno! Uno just raided. Nadine, that was the person who I got to meet. What? Oh, that's so cool. I have to show it again. This guy! Uno! Hi, Uno. Thank that's you for the so raid. Cool. Welcome yeah, to... I completely missed it. I think we, we kind of missed... Yeah, this is when I went down to Winchester alone. That's so cool. Mm -hmm. when, when we abandoned you... <laughs> I was okay, so okay. sad that day. I couldn't believe how sad I was that day. No. I was alone in the rain. And then well, I did. I got to see friends. And then I did that train. It got better once I saw Uno. But I was like, I was yeah. actually shocked. It was a precursor to uh, mm -hmm. how much I miss you now. Yeah, it's weird if you spend so much people, uh, so much, so much time with people, not so much people with time. Uh, if you spend so much uh, time with like a certain. Uh, like with with people and then at some point it, it just stops it, it feels even though it was only like a week but it, it's still weird after that it's just, just like go our separate ways and it's like well, bye we crammed so much into every day while we were traveling mm -hmm. and that and that's the thing it's just like i think that's why it, it's hard to adjust after this mm. i don't know that's that's where i'm at at least emotionally and everything. Yeah. I mean, after like a journey like this, it's it's, it's always hard to say goodbye and like an annoying or like that you have to say bye to friends and stuff. But at the same time, it's also kind of nice to like go back home again to see the people that you've missed there. So it's, it's always like a 
uh uh in in German you say it's 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 a uh, a double pointed blade. Mm. I, <laughs> I told Joe I was like, ah, oh, it was so hard to leave the ship and she's like, How dare you? <laughs> <laughs> Same. I mean, that's that's the entirety of, of the trip. I mean, I've been mm. talking for like four and a half hours straight now. Do you have any sort of I don't want to put you on the spot and be like, all right, take us home, Nadine. What's what's our what's our wrap up point here? <sighs> I think the whole two it was almost two weeks for me. Um for you too, I guess. It was just like two weeks of getting to see so many friends again that I haven't seen in yeah, like three or more years, basically. Like starting with Barcelona, because a lot of uh, event staff and just people that were at magic events all the time before Corona hit uh, that I haven't seen in so long. It was almost like coming back home to a family I haven't seen in so long, which was incredibly heartwarming for me. And just like all this whole trip that we got to do, uh, that I got to do with such good friends, um, it was just this incredibly heartwarming experience. Uh, that I'm so grateful for, and uh, yeah, just like kind of all thanks to this this card game that brought us together. It was just like it's just so cool. We were on a train when everybody started doing these like 30 year anniversary. Like, oh my god, this is what magic is meant, and we're sitting on this trip basically that only happened because of the game. Yeah, I don't know. All right, so the plan is um, I have to twist James's arm to get you out here for more magic events. <laughs> and uh, yeah and just try and be a better friend and keep it in touch in general I can't believe again that we had hung out for a total of three days before this and then decided to travel around Europe together for a week <laughs> it's uh I don't know it's, it, it's again it's kind of uh, what what uh, how magic brought us together and just like through other friends uh, you just kind of trust those friends to have good friends and just like yeah sure like let's do this it's it's gonna be fun and it was fun it was the best joe just brought me another cup of coffee this is this is the life that i left behind <laughs> yeah she does a little a little pat pat just a little uh, a little check in there i just saw it very delayed probably <laughs> it was cute i don't know you, you basically caught it on that Friendship is magic. Turns out the gathering is a big part of it we're getting all like we're getting all yeah all cringe at the end here being like my feel none it's it's what I've missed most uh, through, like Corona, because uh, no, there were kind of no magic events, and I'm, I've, I've got a bit. I'm not a huge like uh, magic online or arena player, because a lot of a lot about it is gathering for me. It's like, uh, most of the fun and excitement I get for magic is just, like playing it with people and seeing people and hanging out with them. So, it's nice that it's back. Well, watch out, because if there's ever anything in Europe again, I'm coming back. You better. <laughs> <laughs> Are you going to Vegas or no? Uh, I have no plans yet. Okay. So, yeah, it's, chances are probably pretty small that I'm going to be there, unfortunately. That's tough. We'll, we'll figure out something. It's a long way. Telling me there's yeah, a Yeah, but I hope, I hope that they do another uh, Europe Magic Event or two next year. That would be super exciting. How how bad was the convention center in your cosplay? Just out of curiosity. Uh, this time around, so that particular convention center I've been in before, and I felt like this time it was a little less bad. Than <laughs> it was, it was less time. bad. Yeah, I mean the the costume I was wearing wasn't as like hot and stuffy as uh the thing I was wearing the last time, but it was it. I, I felt like the air condition was working a little little better than in 19 i think 2019 i think it was uh when i was there wearing my casmina cosplay and i was i was kind of a walking zombie at times just like the walk from the hotel over to the convention center was like cooking me my armor and then i was in there and the the air condition was barely working and in the evening when i took it all off i had like in in the spots where there was like foam armor over fabric i had like heat rushes and like oh, the exact no. shape of <laughs> shape of the armor it was it was wild this time it was a little less crazy i felt like but uh i was also out of all of the sponsored cosplayers there i probably had the most like comfortable outfit really in my little dress 
It was it was most comfortable, except for shoes. <laughs> um, but <laughs> but I know that uh, Tanakh cosplay, the Garrick cosplayer, and um, Aragorn, they they were uh, suffering a bit in the heat because they they had like very like layered costumes. So it was it was a lot for them. So are you hoping yeah, for somewhere else in Europe, or you'd go back to Barcelona? Because that's that city was very cool. Well, the city is very cool. Yeah, it's it, it's a nice city to have a convention in. Um, I just wish they would fix like the temperature in, <laughs> in the convention hall, or like have a different venue. I don't know, or just like not making it in the middle of summer. I guess. Yeah, I, don't know. I mean that's the cheapest but time, maybe, right? Yeah. How about February? Yeah, no matter right? what they do, I'm gonna be happy to be there because friends are there. So. Yeah. <laughs> But uh, yeah, Europe is not as as good uh, about air condition as the U.S. is. The U.S. is air condition champ. Well, almost a bit extreme, but uh, yeah, I was gonna I was gonna say I think there's good reasons of why, but yeah, yeah, no, fair enough. No, like when I when I I took my Johnny costume to GP Vegas at one point, people were like, oh my god, you're gonna die in Vegas in summer in your first suit. And I was like, do you even know? It's like the best place to be at. Oh, right. Because <laughs> you're inside. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. And you can just like always be inside, basically, because they have like a little connecty tunnel. Sure, business. yeah. And like the, the air condition is like basically like winter in there. It's amazing. <laughs> <laughs> I forgot you've gone like pretty intense stuff. I'm, I'm just starting to catch up with you now and see things. <laughs> just like randomly talking about whatever. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I think I'm, I'm happy to sort of wrap up now. I do miss yeah. you, but I don't necessarily want to turn in like an actual conversation of catching up with you no, with the no. content. So we've been talking for a long time and it's actually kind of late here and I've been yawning. I'm sorry. No, 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 no. That's okay. Trust me. I want to yawn as well. Uh, Nadine, I miss you and I adore you. And A, thank oh, you for the trip and B, thank you for coming on here and sharing your perspective on stuff. Because this was really Thank special. Thank you for having me. It was uh, kind of nice to like wrap up a little trip uh, a little bit again, to talk about it again, see the pictures again, and hang out with the friends, and share like the exciting time we had. Uh, very quickly, do you want to? I didn't actually give Olivia a chance to like plug her stuff. <laughs> I just told about it afterwards. <laughs> if people want to find you, if they want to see photos of you and your cosplay, mm -hmm. where can they find you? Uh, it's on Instagram and Twitter. It's at Nissa Cosplay. And I also have non Nissa cosplays, yes. Wherever wherever we end up on the new internet, whatever happens, whoever the victor yeah. emerges as. We'll see who wins the squabble. All right, I'm gonna let you go. I'm it's so hard. I don't want to hit the goodbye button. But you should. You should you should take a break. But you should probably not sleep yet as I do. Joe says it's not goodbye, it's just taking it offline, which I think is yes. very fitting. All right. Goodbye, friend. We'll exactly. talk soon. Goodbye. Thank you so much. <laughs> My heart. It's so quiet now. Um, I had a bunch of subs that I didn't have a chance to read because we were just kind of like enjoying the vibe. So thank you to everybody for the patience and the support. Uh, Street Rage, thank you for the 16. Base Cat, thank you for the quarter year. Uh, random blathering. Thank you. I saw it was like three months all at the same time. I really appreciate that. Lintoon, thank you for the 57. Uno, thank you again for the raid. And Ferrisar, well, well, well. Thank you for the nine months. Serge, will, how will I catch up? I don't know. I, yeah. I keep coming back to this of I'm so inspired and re-energized and overwhelmed of how incredible this trip was. Um, and I didn't realize, again, I don't want to use the word stuck because I, I have a good life. I live a very good life. But getting the outside perspective, like traveling is just so important sometimes. And just how do I incorporate all of this energy and all of this passion, all of this magic that I just experienced into my life now, right? That's going to be the challenge for the coming days and weeks. <laughs> a, a, a journey, not a challenge, my love, the journey uh, for the next little bit there. Um, friends, thank you for joining me today, by the way. 
for this adventure and recollection. And I don't know, I hope this was interesting to you. The sort of weird, uh, oddly put together podcast, just chatting. I, I never have guests on. We had, we had literal like guests appear on the stream and just chat and hang out. And that was really special. Like, thank you so much to Olivia and Nadine for that. And just giving us their, um, their time and their energy and their perspective, right? Like that was cool as heck. Um, we also had a bunch of people stop by and just give a really warm welcome to Uno with the raid. We had Ben Ben with the raid. <laughs> we had uh, Dead Pine with the raid. Like what? Vince, right? Pleasant Kenobi with the raid as well. What a day. Yeah, Jorbs just stopped by and chilled. Who's this guy on Serge's channel? I mean, on Joe's channel? Pardon me. It's okay. I asked her for permission to stream and hang out. So I, I think starting tomorrow, I'm going to try a normalish streaming schedule. That's going to feel weird. <laughs> going to hang out and try and play Minecraft tomorrow? What's that going to look like? I don't know. Um, other weird stuff. I touched on it just very briefly in um over the lunch break but joe and i are moving and that's really exciting and really neat but it's also going to make for um a lot of i don't want to say disruption but like just a very different viewing experience than you normally have uh so look forward to all the uh, uncertainty is a really good word yeah <laughs> let's go yeah big house with ac not quite not quite but uh, certainly a bigger apartment. <laughs> um, but yeah, that's, well, I'm sure we'll talk about that more in the coming days and weeks and whatever. All right, let's, uh, let's go raid somebody. Oh my God. You know whom we can raid? Cam. Is there room for an extra monitor? Maybe, we'll see. <laughs> we'll see. All right, um, we're going to go raid my friend Cameron. Uh, Cameron is a delight and will um, say bad words like butts. So just be aware that our family friendly vibe is changing. Uh, any plans on doing merch? Not not now. <laughs> the, the, um, the whole move thing is going to be taking up the vast majority of my life energy and everything. Hey, thank you for the 300 bits. I really do appreciate that. Yeah, one hurdle at a time. Talk to me after we've moved. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Uh, thank you for the warm welcome back. Thank you for keeping Joe company while I was gone. Um, thank you to Nadine and Olivia for adding so much positivity into my life these past couple weeks. Yeah, just thanks in general. Uh, I'll see you tomorrow. Bye.